your seatbelt is going to be a bump. Bucky Ross. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty seconds remaining. Like they want me to say, I doubt it will stand up to something. I have any disrespect for you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything Everywhere All at Once, because that's also what we call it when Ash takes off his shirt. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Rockfin, Rumble, all places where fine podcasts are sold. Guys, I got a lot of stand up dates coming up. 2023. It's going to be the summer of George. I'm going to be doing a lot of fun shows. Very excited. Um, let me, what's going on with my computer? I'm going to share my screen and tell you about all my fun, 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 fun dates. Uh, at the beginning of February, I'm going to be in Rochester. I know you guys, I know your dream is to spend your February in Rochester, New York, but I will be there February 3rd and 4th for DabbleCon. There'll be a stand-up uh, show called Comedians of the Dabbleverse, live podcast tapings, a meet and greet, and the Dabby Awards. All of these events will be held at Comedy at the Carlson in Rochester, New York. And then at the end of February, I'll be heading to California. We just added this Pasadena show for Thursday, uh, February 23rd. I think this is going to be at an Elks Lodge. I'm so excited. I would like to only perform at Elks Lodges. You know what? Screw mainstream comedy clubs. I'm just going to go where the old men are. But anyway, Elks Lodge in Pasadena, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> Friday, February 23rd. Then I'll be in San Diego, the 24th and 25th at the Mic Drop Comedy Club. Then I'm definitely going to Anime Matsuri in August. And as part of that, I'll be headlining uh, the secret group in Houston Friday, August 11th. All these tickets are on sale right now. Plus, I'm adding in a trip to Dallas in the beginning of May. Looking at Vegas, looking at a couple other uh, spots to stick in shows this year. It's going to be a fun year. Good times, guys. Can't wait. Can't wait to do comedy. What else? I want to do a quick shout out to my t-shirt provider, Flagrant Triggers. Flagrantly, flagrantly enraging them all. They carry my shirts, X-Ray Girls, Lila Hart. Um, just click on my little face and you can get any of my shirts. Rooting for Putin, You Sound Vaccinated, Simpcast, Mayor Mayor, Make America Great Again, Frostbite, Simpcast, The Tank Top, Smayer, a filing cabinet shirt, a Christmas shirt, which is not relevant right now, but why not? 27 bucks includes shipping. Shirts are super soft. Get them now from flagranttriggers.com. Please and thank you. I'm so excited to have this guest on the show today. I've had him on before, but it was while he was kind of running for office. So now we have raw, unfiltered version of this guest. Uh, he is uh, a, a vice presidential bronze medalist. He is the founder and president of You Are the Power, uh, an, a libertarian nonprofit. He's also... Yeah, uh, just a libertarian meme lord, thought meme. leader. Just just meme an amazing leader, man. really. Meme, meme leader. leader. <laughs> Spike Cohen, everybody. Yay. Thank you. Thank Let's you for having me on. It's great to be I back. Need an, I need an applause button. I got to get some things going for 2023. And, and one of those things is going to be sound effects. I had that for my show um, before I decided that I, I didn't have uh, two hours a, a week to do a show. I uh, I used to have like this like annoyingly long applause line to to bring me in, and it would last like I think it was like a minute and ten seconds or something. And I'd be like, "Oh, thank you, thank you so much." Oh no, you no, you <laughs> clap for yourself. You're so great. And I'd try to start the show, and I go, "Oh, please, please, please." And it it that was funny for about four episodes, and then 
I went on way too long because um, just would go yeah, on. No, like, please. I'm, sh- you know, you're good too. Oh, come you help. Oh, no, you. I'm clapping for you. It was pretty, it was pretty annoying. I got annoyed with it. So then I, I dropped it. Awesome. Yeah. If my voice sounds weird and I'm out of it, it's because I think I have a cold. I rented a friend a uh, house with a bunch of friends this past weekend in the Poconos. It was just like, you know, could be maybe it could be a tradition. Every MLK weekend, we rent a house and hang out and just get hammered for three days. Um, but we played. It was so great to not be attached to my phone as much as usual. We just yes. played. Uh, God, not Cards Against Humanity. Loaded Questions is the best. Like, that is a way to bond with people like no other game. Because if you've never played before, uh, it takes a couple rounds. But if you end up playing with the same friends often, like you learn each other's inside jokes. And ultimately, it's just a game that lets you be as racist as you'd like. It's fun. It's fun for me. It's fun for the friends. So it's like secret Hitler, but like you're trying to become Hitler, basically. It's it's like you're okay. So, what would be one of the questions you would get? Um, name something that you would enjoy losing, and then you know, people, your aunt, someone might put in an answer like my ass virginity or something like that. Yeah. And like, you try to have the funniest answer, or the or their, you know, the person who drew the card. You try to have their favorite answer, so then mm-hmm. you move up, and then if the person guesses, you know, who all has the right answer, like, okay, I guess that the ass virginity, that was Spike's answer. And then if, and if that was correct, it wasn't, but yeah. Okay. (laughs) But if I pick ass virginity and that's my favorite and that was your card, then you move up two spots. It's I've never like laughed harder. Like I laughed so hard. I couldn't breathe in this game. Like I laughed all my makeup off. We were all like hunched over the table. Like, it was it's so stupid fun i don't know if it's just the way that we play it or if this is the most brilliant game ever invented but (laughs) it's such a good good time that's good that's good fun 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 yes spike last time you were here you were uh running as i think joe jorgensen's vp candidate yeah i was running for vice president yeah i do do you enjoy running for office or you're happy now to just like that was my first time office. running for that was my first time running for anything. And so um, I was kind of uh, honestly learning as I went along. What was weird was I had it, an idea in my head of what it was going to be like. And it was pretty much like that. I, I kind of nailed it in terms of like how intense the schedule would be. Like, I, you know, I told you it was a blur doing the interviews. Um, and, uh, you know, I would be doing like seven, eight interviews a day. So it's one of the I would say probably the single most challenging thing I've ever done in such a short period of time. I love it. Um, you know, not not opposed to doing something like it in the future. But uh, I am definitely enjoying the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm not in two different states every day. And that I'm not, you know, uh, I, I, I remember there was a time that people were making fun of Joe Biden. Uh, during the campaign because he said it's great to be in where where am I and meanwhile he might have been out in front of his house honestly but but you know he said you know where am I and I was like and they were like you know are you going to give a hot take on that I'm like my hot take is I didn't know where I was just a moment ago like you know I get that like I get the uh, you know the whole like where am I because I've been in eight states in the last four days so I it was fun like I said and it was really cool and challenging I met some incredible people but uh, I'm definitely enjoying, uh, and I still have a pretty you know decent travel schedule. But I'm definitely enjoying the somewhat uh, slower pace that, and 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 knowing having a good idea most of the time where on the planet I am without having to think too hard about it. That's nice. That's a luxury. Yeah, you don't would... realize the luxury that is until you have it. Yeah, because you're always traveling. You sometimes don't know where you are. Do you feel like okay? So you ran for office you might run again do you feel like that that changes who you are like let's say you're someone who i don't know like you make uh jokes on twitter or you're do you feel like you're limited in some in some ways like in how you should lead your life because you're a person who has run and will run again for office i probably should but i don't (laughs) so during the campaign i was a little bit less edgy than i would be probably more than than many would have wished i was but i i I was it took a little bit of the edge off, um, but I kind of went back to you know being how I am. Uh, once the campaign was over, I'm like, all right, well, I'm no longer speaking on behalf of the entire Libertarian Party, um, so you know I can I can uh, I can act up a little bit more now. Um, but no, I'm I 
and maybe this isn't politically smart. I don't know. Some you can tell us in the comments, but I, uh, I, I'm pretty much, uh, I, I'm pretty much the same person I was before. Um, the only real change now to like my daily life is, um, I, I'm not, I'm obviously not paparazzi famous. Like I can go to the store and, and people probably, you know, don't stop, know. Stop. That. Yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not like that. It's not like that, but I will have, I'd say at least every week or so I'll be out at like a store or, you know, in the, it happens a lot in the airport if I'm going somewhere and someone will say, oh, are you Spike Cohen or, you know, something like that. And a lot of people will recognize my wife, Tasha, before me, which I find hilarious. Um, but uh, yeah, so what I've learned is because the, the last time it happened, I was like, it was like 1030 at night. I was running to the Walmart up the street to uh, just to grab whatever. And, um, you know, I wasn't I didn't I wasn't didn't have any, didn't do anything with my hair. I was like, you know, late at night. I'm wearing like sweatpants or whatever. And these people, it was like a group of of uh, college kids and they knew who I was and they were all excited. So I'm there taking selfies and I look like an absolute like train wreck. And so now it's I I I, I try to make sure I look at least somewhat presentable. And I said, um, I remember I came home to my wife and I'm like, I now know how Kim Kardashian feels like I know that, you know, what it's like to <laughs> have to. And know. I'm and I'm flying to Ecuador to get a fake ass. I'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I wasn't going to say that until after it happened. Right. So, like, you know, right. I want to make sure people get used to the new look before I disclose that, you know, that I've had work done. But so far, no work done. But I have told people. So like this hairline, I didn't care that I looked that the balding is happening in, in real time. Um, it doesn't really but look like it, but maybe just the it's single. Yeah, it's it, what it looks like is I have just a six head, like a very, very large, just a, a very big. And it is this angle. I have a giant. I like it. Anyway. You look like you have a bigger brain. It's like you, I need all this room. I look like Brainiac. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've told people is like if I suddenly have a perfect hairline and it's straight across and it looks great. Do you know know that I am definitely running for president? Like that's <laughs> that is the that's the clue. Or you're if gunning suddenly, for like, Tucker Carlson's job. Yeah. Or something, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm about to level up in some way. If I suddenly have the the hairline I had back in the late '90s, you have then you know, mm -hmm. yeah. If I'm suddenly like, hello, fellow people with lots of hair, then you know something's about to happen. It's about <laughs> to go down. Whatever's about to happen, it's going to be big. That's so tricky. About that's the thing about making enhancements to yourself. It's like if you're going to do it, you got to do it this the, the moment you start to notice something's changing. But then, like, you get too much done, and people yeah. make fun of you for it. So the moral yeah. of the story is, you never make anybody happy. <laughs> Just no, you're not going to make people happy. Which is why, like, if I'm going to have work done, you're going to know it, and I will say it, and I'll say I'm doing this because I want. Like, I'm not. I'm not going to be fake about it. Like, if I'm suddenly like seven inches taller, I'm not going to be like, oh, what? Oh, I must have had a growth spurt. Like, I mean, it's it's. Like I will, I will own any work I have done because it'll be pretty <laughs> obvious. It'll be intense. I will want, I won't just want, you know, like to, to somewhat fix the hairline. I will want a better hairline than I've ever had. I will want perfect forehead, you know, uh, oh. what is it? The, what, you know, perfectly flat hairline and the whole thing. I, I'm going for the whole way you are. I'm I spending could, the I, money. I could see you going just like human bald eagle hybrid and you're just like, oh, I'll be like, are those wings, Spike? And she like, you know, just <laughs> yes, relax. they were. They're wings. I have, yeah, yeah, and they're hydraulically. I can actually fly <laughs> short distances. Like if I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Like I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. not playing around. It's bit. You know, you're spending the money. I'm not going to half ass it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go full full throttle. I'm full I ass. Think I think they've quietly taken bald eagles off the endangered species list. I think they're fine now. I think they're, they're just everywhere. Like, they're just like basically large pigeons. They're you know. There's something kind of Wouldn't sad be... about that. They well, lost I their victim so. status. They lost their victim status. Well, now they're privileged, and that's you know they need to <laughs> they need to check their their eagle privilege. Yes, I, I live in the Myrtle Beach area, and they're everywhere. Like they're all over the place. They are. They're not as prolific as like turkey vultures or something like that. But I'll see them on a regular basis. And so yeah, if if they ever were endangered, they're definitely not now. <laughs> like that. There's no reason to to consider them endangered because they're. It's uh, once you've seen one, you've seen a thousand of them. Yeah, they're just not they're just not as special anymore. All right. So the last time we talked, it was was it? Gosh, was it 2020 or 2021? Yeah, 2020. No, it was oh, 2020, my yeah. gosh. OK, so since then, 
uh, the the <laughs> pandemic uh, yeah. sort of narrative has fallen apart. The people yes. have all but completely lost trust in the media, in our institutions. We don't know. A lot of people are going, what the fuck did we just put into our bodies here? And we were told <laughs> that nothing bad would ever happen. Do yeah. you feel like this is helping the liberty movement? Do you feel like the crumbling of society is pushing people towards libertarianism now? Or is it kind of just more I of the same? I think so. I think it's pushing pushing them to alternatives. Like they recognize the status quo has completely and utterly failed them and is continuing to fail them. And what happens is once you have that realization, you go from the one extreme of of trusting or hoping that you can trust them to the other extreme of not trusting anything they're saying, even when it is true. Uh, and and so now you're just looking for some alternative. And, you know, the Libertarian Party and the Libertarian movement, we have a great opportunity to reach these folks and say, yeah, we've been saying this all along and here are our solutions to these things. But the thing is, we're not the only people out there, right? There are socialists, there are, you know, far right nationalists, there's fascists, there's, you know, all of the various outside of the Overton window beliefs. Uh, are are competing for folks who are you know throwing their hands up in frustration and saying I don't trust any of the people that I'm seeing on TV I don't trust anyone that I was told was an expert and I, I want to know what the truth is so that's up to us you know we have to make those connections we have to show that we have the solution to that I, I will say I feel vindicated because I made my first anti lockdown video shortly before the lockdowns came here um, I was seeing them happening in um, in like Europe. Uh, they had already been going on in China, but I saw them happening in like Italy and in Spain. And I thought, well, that's going to come here. Like it's already in the Western world. It's coming here. We know there are cases here. It's certainly spreading and they have no idea who has it. Um, the CDC wasn't even allowing testing at the time. So I'm like, it's everywhere. And um, so I made a video like saying, here's why lockdowns aren't going to work. They they recreate the conditions for cold and flu season where mm. you're staying in your poorly ventilated home, venturing out only to do basic things, uh, you know, get, go and get food and, and necessities, going the same place everyone else is going in a you know curfewed period of time. So you're all right next to each other and, and all in the same checkout line together, going home to your ventilated, poorly ventilated home to spread what you just got to everyone in your mm. family. Like this is not going to help things. And so I made that video and, and it was funny because the, this would have been, I think, first week of March and everyone uh, or not everyone. I, it was mostly agreeable comments, but the disagreeable comments were people saying, you moron, that's never going to happen. Oh. And, yeah. and you're not a doctor. Was, you're not. A <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and you're not a doctor, but like we'd never do that. We're not going to lock people down. That's stupid. Huh. Yeah. The Europeans and the Latin Americans and the Asians and basically every other continent. But us in Antarctica aren't doing it, but but we're definitely never going to do that. And so it was uh, and then, of course, two weeks later, they're saying, you idiot, if you don't stay in your house, you're going to kill my grandmother. And so it was funny to watch how quickly that turned. But it's very vindicating to be able to say, yeah, look, I, uh, um, uh, you know, we should we this is stupid. It's going to happen and, it, and it's dumb and it shouldn't happen. Oh, if you're looking for it on my YouTube, I think it's it's actually on my Facebook. My YouTube wasn't set oh, up. Oh, <laughs> OK. Good. I would have been looking forever, but this is yeah. You would have been if like that's most... what you were looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just let me. If you're if you're not subscribed uh, to at literally Spike Cohen on YouTube, please do. Yes. There's a ton of great yes. videos on here. Yeah, and hit the bell. Hit the bell. Your phone. I want your phone Bing. to explode. And hit the bell on this. If you're subscribed to Chrissy but you haven't hit the bell on YouTube, what are you then doing? Then that means you're not being. That just means you're being notified when you're in the app, and that's not right. Yeah. Like, hit the bell. I want your phone to explode with notifications when I go live, when Chrissy goes live, yeah. and we upload something. Hit the bell. Is Hit there Chrissy's someone bell. at YouTube I can talk to to make it so not only that it's a ping, but it also vibrates? Like, I want everyone to be like, well, excited. <laughs> Calls you know? them, like, gives when them a call. Like, hey, this is YouTube. Content. Chrissy's got her show going. You kind of want yeah. to tune in. <laughs> is this a telemarketer? No, just it's, it's me <laughs> telling you I have a new video up. We've been meaning to reach you about Chrissy's new video. So please just, you know, just open your app and, and do it. So, yeah, no, hit hit Chrissy's bell so you can hit, see everything she's uh, putting out. Hit my, be my bell, guys. My bell hasn't been hit in quite some time. <laughs> so it feels it feels good. It feels vindicated to know. Right. And you're you're just a person with common sense. And, and you could tell that the lockdowns were going to be atrocious.
it literally i'm no like epidemiologist now what it was happening i started like kind of brushing up and reading about it i read about the uh lockdown plan that happened in 2005 under the uh the book <laughs> this <laughs> the is holocaust. funny yeah. i survived the holocaust that's the so holocaust, funny how yeah. come i haven't heard that yeah. before that's oh, an i don't yeah i don't think i've i've heard that either i uh i so I, I mean i did research and found out that the u.s had a lockdown plan that had been done during 2005 when the Bush administration was worried that the bird flu would start spreading from person to person. Now, the bird flu had a 90 percent or 80 or 90 percent fatality rate. Wow. So definitely a plan that you would craft for something that's going to kill almost everyone. You should definitely use that for a virus that I think at its worst, they thought the fatality rate might be like three percent or two percent. It was very quickly by by April. We knew it was nowhere near that. And uh, and yet they still continued it. And um, so it was I, I won't say I feel good because it sucks that all this happened because um, we did it again with the vaccine mandate. We were like, they're going to mandate this. And I was like, you moron. We never do that here. Immediately turn around and go, you idiot. If you don't get this vaccine, you're killing my grandmother. And I think, you know, your grandmother, it seems fragile. And yeah, because I don't she, know you. And uh, yeah, I, she could <laughs> die. Any she could die over a choking on a. A uh, thin mint cookie out of the freezer. You know what I mean? Like it's. I, I live nowhere. She's had near a good you, run so... too, by the way. I, I think if I were great. <laughs> if, if I were eighty or ninety years old, if I'm a grandma, I would be like, please don't like uh, dim your own light. Don't don't hamper your lifestyle right. because of me. Like I got to, do, I, you know. Exactly. Well, I and got also to like sleep with everyone on Kiss or whatever people did at that time whatever the grandmas did uh whatever the know. grandmas however the grandmas got it worked out i uh you know i i didn't even live near these people and i'm like i my going to the i remember there was one where i made a video it, it, we had a very brief lockdown in south carolina it was kind of a joke no one really took it seriously and one of the things they said was that you couldn't go to the beach unless you I own property that. on the beach they you were arresting the people off the beach i think in california in california they were here they were just saying uh, we, for, I think the first two days they had cops posted and I would go and, and, and they'd say, you're not supposed to come to the beach. And I'd say, oh, I own property adjacent to the beach. And they go, oh, OK. And then they'd let you go on. And that lasted two days. And then they stopped doing that. So I made a video where I went out on the beach and I'm like, yeah, I'm on the beach uh, so far. I feel good. And there were people in the comments saying, like, this is dangerous. You don't know what could happen. And it's like, guys, if wow. me being nowhere near anyone else, surrounded by sunlight and saline and sand, like the virus killers, if if I'm out, if, if it's unsafe for me to be out here, then it's unsafe for me to be in my house. Like we're all going to die if it's that bad. If this is something that spreads so easily that I can be here and get it with no one around me, then we're all going to die we're all, or we're all going to get COVID and be fine, which is ultimately what happened. But, Do you think people so it is vindicated? Of do you think people's fear of the virus was directly related to what kind of media they consumed or who oh, yeah. their friends were or like were they germaphobic to begin with do you think like if you there could rank that. them so i yeah i mean i would say it's all those things and because it's related to a disease your your fear of of illness would obviously come in i mean a lot of people have developed hypochondria from this whole thing and um and i'm not even sure if it's hypochondria because it's not even necessarily they think they have it, but it's more just like a germophobia, I guess. So, and and I like will say, a like, constant ever since level had, of fear. Yeah. And I will say, I ever since I've had MS, because it's an autoimmune disease and getting sick can make your immune system act weird, I've been a lot more vigilant in the last few years to try not to get sick. I mean, not to a ridiculous extent and or anything like that, but like I wash my hands more often, uh, you know, just randomly throughout the day and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I don't really like I don't drink stuff after other people and, uh, you know, and, and just I mean, minor things like that. So when the when COVID first came, I was at least somewhat mindful of, of you know, just being maybe a little bit more careful. But pretty quickly, I realized like this is something that's probably, a, you know, worse than the flu. And uh, but that, you know, we're going to have to live our lives. Also, I think I'm pretty sure I got it in February of 2020. Uh, I was at the um, the New Hampshire primaries in Manchester, and there were people from everywhere. And I I I was you know this close in in, pa in packed rooms with thousands of people. I, I went to the Bernie Sanders victory rally to troll him with Vermin Supreme, and um, 
And it was funny because when we got there, everyone saw Vermin and they like stopped listening to Bernie and started wanting to get selfies with Ber with uh, Vermin. And Bernie got all pissed off at us and we had to leave. But anyway, um, so I mean, I was around thousands of people and then I got like really sick afterwards. So I'm pretty sure I got it then, but I was OK. And then, you know, you, you go back to living your life. You get sick, you stay away from others because you don't feel good and you don't want to spread it. And then you go back to your life. That's how we should have treated this from the beginning. Do you think uh, like running for office or... or or, you know, doing all those, you know, the, like the tours around and the rallies yeah. and such, you think doing that during a pandemic, like hurt or helped the libertarian movement more? Cause I, I feel like it's a perfect example. Like, Hey, we're living, this is going on right now. You can see our liberties being taken away. You can yeah. see how the government is being far too controlling. Like, look what's happening. But did, or did you feel like it hurt because, well, people are just, they're afraid they've been psyoped. There, there's no getting to certain yeah. people. I, I think that for those who were ready to hear that message, it helped. And for those who weren't, it, we weren't going to get them anyway. Like if, if people, especially by the time we were actually out campaigning in the general election, we didn't get nominated. I got my nomination May 24th. And we started, I think my first actual event that I went somewhere was like June 10th or something like that that was around the time i was doing like your interview and a lot of like at home interviews i was in this room just doing interview after interview and uh so it wasn't really until june july that we started going anywhere and by then if there were still people that were freaking out about the idea of people getting together even like outside because most of our events were outdoors so we could have a bunch of people and not have to you know pay for some venue or something and um and a lot of the venues were forced close but like if someone was still upset about that, we weren't going to reach them with our message because our message was we need to we need to return to some sense of normalcy. You know, we need to as as individuals, we need to figure out our our risk and make calculated decisions. But we can't be telling people that they can't open their businesses and that they can't live their lives this way like that's if there were even any justification for a temporary lockdown, which I don't believe that there ever was, because I don't think I think lockdowns don't work. Uh, and we have proof of that now. But if there ever was any justification, there certainly wasn't by June. So but I, I can tell you the way that I ran my because uh, my campaign was distinctly different from Joe's. Uh, and and there were there were many reasons for that. But um, so the way that I ran, um, we would try to get the permit like our team would try to get the permit for wherever we were going. And if they either wouldn't give us the permit or that office wasn't open, because in a lot of states, their permitting offices were closed. We just do it anyway, because we have a right to assemble peacefully and to to, you know, to meet each other outside and to have events and to talk about political issues and to run for office. And there were a few times where we'd run up to the you know local police and they would tell us we couldn't do it. And we'd do it anyway. And oddly enough, we never actually I was waiting to get arrested and uh, or for some members of our team to get arrested or for people that attended to get arrested. And that actually that never happened. We had one person that was arrested for open carrying at a park. And those charges ended up getting dropped. But um, other than that, they, they pretty much left us alone. The biggest one was in Miami. Um, they had many, many police out there. And then the media came out and we were in the middle of Calle Ocho in downtown Miami. And we said, we're doing this event. If you need to arrest us, then arrest us. But we're doing it. So um, I think a lot of people needed to see that and needed to and know that. And what date was that? That was oh, that that is on my YouTube. That was October 15th. It was either October 15th or 16th in uh, of 2020. Um, wow. And that was in uh, that was in Miami. And the um, they actually shut down that venue the day of. And they said it was because of covid. But it was also the time that the Donald Trump and Joe Biden were doing separate events um, in Miami. They were supposed to do a um, uh, a debate there. Uh, and then that ended up either being canceled or they did it remotely because co uh, Trump got COVID. But they were both there in Miami. And so I don't know if it was because they didn't want any distraction from that or they just wanted to give this business owner a hard time. Um, but whatever it was, we did the event anyway. And it turns out the business owner fled communist Cuba uh, many wow. years ago and opened this business. And he said, what I'm seeing right now with the COVID regime is as bad as anything I saw before we realized things were too bad here and fled Cuba. So, I mean, it's it to put it in perspective, the COVID regime, especially during the worst parts of it, were, in, were comparable to some of the worst uh, dictatorships out there. Yeah. And it's like the people that are directly from there know the best. So it's like, what else do you need to hear other than from exactly. the guy that used to live there? And again, exactly. like at no point were people dropping dead in the streets you know what i mean <laughs> it's not like you know you'd be 
watching TV and suddenly seeing, you know, athletes dying and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> Oh wait, that's now. Um, yeah. so it's, yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Well, it's, a, it's a crazy thing to, to have lived through. It is. It is. And the thing is as a libertarian, this happens a lot. So the, the longer you're a libertarian, the more you experience this thing where a crisis happens and you watch everything unfold. You watch first people go, oh, I don't know if that's a big deal. And then they go, oh, this is the worst thing ever because the media informs them that this is in fact the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. And then they go, well, what are we going to do? What, what are they going to make us do? And then the government tells them what to do. And they go, we have to all do this. And you, you watch these things unfold and you stay, you know, it's a very Zen moment for us as libertarians because we're sitting there watching the whole world oscillate between apathy and freaking out. And we're like, no, this might be a big deal, but none of this is going to help. And uh, the government are the last people we should trust about these things. And the experts are, ex are an extension of government. And common mm -hmm. sense tells you this isn't going to work. And people freak out at you and tell you that you're the problem and you're why this is happening. And then eventually you're, you're vindicated and proven right. And, uh, and many of these people will now be on your side, but rarely do they acknowledge that you were right all along. Because that would have to, they'd have to acknowledge they were wrong. And so you just learn to just live with it. And, you know, you were, you were right. And, and some people might acknowledge it, but most won't. But, you know, but there is a, a satisfaction of knowing, like, this just proves that we're right about what we say. Yeah. And that point you made about the experts being an extension of the government, I think that was a big red pill moment of the pandemic to yeah. learn. Not only are the experts and uh, all the organizations, the institutions, all extensions of the government working for the, the big pharma companies, same thing, all, all hand in hand, yeah. and particularly the celebrities. Uh, that was a big moment for me seeing, I think, Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom wearing like Fauci gang sweatshirts. And I was like, oh, my God, there's no of course they were sent these sweatshirts there's no way that these celebrities are going and have th having this made they're not like going no, on to Etsy propaganda. Yeah. or printing they're not printing these up and be like man i love this man so much i gotta this is the first <laughs> thing i want to throw on in the morning i'm like i was like oh my fucking god there's someone actually yeah. print printing these clothes out and sending them to celebrities saying take a picture of yourself in this and post it somewhere and i was like yeah mother fucker they are in yeah. everyone is in so deep with these people they're just What's everyone's wild. a tool What's wild is, especially Anthony Fauci, because Anthony Fauci was the villain of the AIDS, of the worst parts of the AIDS pandemic. Like he was the guy who went on the news and, you know, helped to spark the gay panic by saying that uh, COVID could be, uh, or not COVID, COVID, he probably said <laughs> this about COVID too, that uh, that AIDS could, it could potentially be spread through casual contact with gay men. Well, the country was already not 100% sure what they thought about gay people anyway. I mean, that was already an issue that we weren't nearly as far along as we are now in accepting that. And so that was the perfect excuse. And a lot of people were just fearful, like, oh, my gosh, if someone's gay, they're going to get AIDS. And then I could get AIDS from being near them. And so that led to um, I, I remember there were some states where if uh, if uh, you were gay um, and they knew it, they'd show up in hazmat gear. If like you had to call, if you got in a, a car accident or something like that. And it's like, he did that. And then, you know, quietly later on admitted that that was never the case that his, his office and IAID admitted that wasn't the case. Um, but he never did. He, he never apologized for that. And then later he was the one that pushed that drug AZT, which was deadly. It killed so many uh, people with HIV um, far quicker and far more painfully than they would have died from the disease itself, while simultaneously holding back treatments that were showing promise because he was in the bed of big pharma. And so he was the villain of, of AIDS. Uh, and so then to watch the media turn this guy who they used to vilify in the 80s and 90s turn him into this hero who was going to save us all. It, it's, it's just, it's insane, but yeah, it's propaganda and it relies yeah. on people's fear and short attention spans and not really remembering any kind of historical context. That's how they get away with all that. That's how they get away with a terrorist group who attacked us. That was, that was started by the CIA that attacked us in, re in retaliation for U S actions in their region and saying, Oh, this is all happening. Cause we're very free because our women wear tight mm. jeans and they don't like that. That's why they're attacking us. It's all because of cleavage. It. It's cleavage. It's your fault. You're it's it's you're actually 9 11, fault. right? Yeah, 9-11. Yeah, yeah. 9-11 yeah. happened because, you know, we're free. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know, we're, we're free. They just well, how, hate how freedom. Free? They just hate our freedom. And freedom, of course, meaning like 
they never really explained what that meant. There would be vague references to, you know, uh, women being able to wear what they wanted or, or vulgar music or whatever. And it was like, no, they've never said any of that. They, they, they have manifestos they've written and videos they've made where they explicitly say why they're doing this. And it's they even Americans talk about are, the fact <laughs> we're very loud when we go abroad and we're in a French cafe. Yes, because we, yeah, because they, of the ugly American. Yeah. They did this because when we go to their, their restaurants, we, uh, you know, we insist on an English menu. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it was stupid. The things that they were saying, but we bought it or I, I can tell you, I bought it. I was 19 when nine 11 happened, but I bought it because I was scared. I didn't know any better. I had no historical context. Uh, the internet existed, but it wasn't nearly as you know prolific in terms of being able to find out anything you just can for now. Napster, really, it was Napster and Morpheus. It was Napster, at that yeah. Time yeah. I had a lot of burn CDs of uh, of bootleg hip hop, but that was yes. pretty much what the it internet was, was for. It, it for was me. the age of John Mayer. Um, yeah, things were simpler then, and it was such a, <laughs> it was huge a simpler time. Visual catastrophe. It just was traumatizing to watch and live through yes and, yeah yeah crazy times i missed 2001 it was good it was a good time yeah but people bought it people bought the uh the the fear narrative much easy much more easily because it was like yeah. oh we you can see like oh there's no way <laughs> the government would have been in on this and fast forward to 2022 and some documents about jfk come out and s some information comes to light and that's just like not a big deal for people like either m most of us it's like those of us who figured the government was uh, was involved with jfk's death are like oh yeah of course we thought this all along or right people that never would have cared even showing them the proof is not going to pique their interest i guess well that that's why they p pick 50 years as the kind of default horizon for declassifying pretty much anything which they destroy a lot of stuff before it gets declassified. But the reason they pick that horizon, they say, oh, it's because that it's no longer operationally important. That's it. It stopped being operationally important if it ever was a long time before that. The reason they pick 50 years is no one really cares. Like mm -hmm. if they if they released video footage of a CIA agent who was in the grassy knoll or wherever, whatever, killing JFK himself uh, or, or, you know, whatever, if they could show evidence Everyone would go, I knew it, or I think that's fake, or I don't care, or whatever. It, but it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't change anything. Everyone involved is either dead or 90 years old. It doesn't matter anymore. And so the reason they do that is that they, they want to always have it that, yeah, those things happened in the past, you know, 50 years ago. And and so the, the, the mainstream narrative in the U.S., really just in general, is that Yes, our government did these terrible things in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and 2000s. We got some pretty bad stuff they did in the 2010s that we're pretty sure of. And no one was ever held accountable, and there were no major policy changes. And if you think they're doing that right now, then you're a crazy crackpot conspiracy theorist. And, you know, where's your tinfoil hat? And it's just wild to me that people think that. So that you're saying they they set the declassification date so far out that nobody who is alive or could make a change it's like just to the point where it's no longer relevant. It's like the, the people that would have voted differently because of this information are either dead or it just doesn't matter. That's not and, and it's not relevant to us. If something gets released, if and I'm just, you know, like if if we found out that in the 1930s uh, that, uh, and I'm just coming up with something that like, you know, the FDR, they did a, a campaign to, to convince the Japanese to attack us so we could get into world war two or something like that. Uh, and meanwhile, it's, that's not far from the truth because the embargoes were, were absolutely done for that purpose. But if it was explicit, like, you know, they, they had a China, a Japanese spy who convinced the, the emperor to attack or something, people would go, wow, that's screwed up. That's terrible. It's a good thing. That's not happening now like it's it it's so far ago that no one cares it doesn't it's not relevant to their life right now and even though we know of all the things that that's why i like twitter files because it's showing stuff that happened mm. like last month or you know last year or something yeah. it, it shows like this is happening now it's absolutely happening with facebook and, and google and and not youtube though uh but with oh, every you not. know I, youtube's great but you know with everything else and uh it's it's good i people need to see it and the risk is that people can become desensitized to it if we don't tie it to the harm and and suffering that they're experiencing right now. 
And that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. We have to show that this isn't just some ab abstract bad thing that's happening. It's why things are as bad as they are. It's why the cost of living is going through the roof. It's why we're tens of trillions of dollars in debt. It's why we're always in fear of you know some new war happening. It's it's why everything's falling apart because these people have this kind of power and they use it as you would expect them to. Yeah, that the point you made about Twitter files is so true because that guy Yoel Roth was still working for Twitter. I think up until November. Yep. of 22 like yep. just a few months ago he was still working there and what came yep. out about jim baker uh jim former baker yeah. guy wor working there and yep. uh so you wonder if that was elon's plan all along like let me buy twitter long enough so i can like drop some truth bombs on people or at least be part of it um change the nature of twitter or what people think of twitter but i, I also have this fear that 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 folks who are just only watch you know well cnn uh, who knows if it's getting better but if they're if they're only watching msnbc <laughs> they were barely the mainstream <clears throat> outlets were barely covering the twitter files who knows if they've uh, i mean the last time i kind of checked nobody was really covering it at all or they were just going yeah. oh this is uh they were making fun of matt taibbi they're like oh matt taibbi's shilling for elon musk he's on his pr team I, I just have a fear that there's a certain percentage of people who will just either never know about the Twitter files, never take it seriously, or the, the they're unconvincible, which is probably true of anything. Yes. And yes. you can't control what people think. Um, it's just good to have more information out there. And, you know, the the issue of censorship is beginning to be, you know, sh like more of a light is being shined on that. And a lot of people were unbanned and... And then certain people are like, oh, well, I got banned on Twitter. It's like, well, <laughs> you shouldn't have posted that nude photo of yourself. And then there's people who are just blatantly getting you know, banned for dumb right. shit. Up. Right, I think it's right. a net yeah. positive overall. It is absolutely a net positive. And you, you, hit, you answered your own question on part of that. There's always going to be people who just aren't reachable. And there are always going to be people that come up with excuses or don't want to see it. Like they're willfully ignorant. They do not want to know. They do not want to see it. Or like you said, they're, they're, they're media. They were one of the 4,000 people that signed up for CNN plus they're going to go down with the ship. It doesn't matter. They're going to, they're going to go to the CNN headquarters uh, when they can no longer afford to broadcast where they live. And they'll go there just so that they can stand outside of the window and hopefully grab some, like they're going to be some people that are not reachable. And that's okay because a we're not we're never going to have everyone agree with us and b we need to focus on people who recognize that there is a problem and that's not necessarily saying like we need to reach people on just the right or just the left or anything like that it's not about right or left it's about people who recognize there's a problem and who are actively looking for solutions so more than like right versus left i look at is someone an early adopter are they in that sort of like gray majority uh are they the laggards who you're never going to get that's sort of more where i group people into is like are these people that are ready to listen are these people who are listening but they want to see that your way works first are they just someone that's looking to see what the majority is doing or are they just someone who's never even going to listen to you they don't care they're set in their ways and that's how it is and no it's it is anytime that this kind of information is released like this it is absolutely a net positive and this was a this was kind of a unicorn moment like having a multi-billionaire sink every bit of money he could put together into buying an app that's probably going to lose him money. I hope it doesn't, but it probably <laughs> is so that he can, you know, make it a place that allows for more free speech and then also release all this information that vindicates everything we've been saying about government censoring us through social media and big tech as a proxy. That's not, I mean, the odds of that happening again are pretty low and it's incredible that it's happened and it is absolutely a net positive. And it's not about, you know, if, if someone would be like, oh, well, you just want you just want Twitter to swing and be like right wing. I mean, this is how like, you know, the average person who's not even going to include libertarianism in their conversation to be like, it's left and right. right like, yeah, oh, you right just wing. want yeah. Twitter to be right wing. And it's like, no, we want everyone to be able to speak. It's just most of the censorship seems to have been affecting libertarians, right wing folks, not the non progressive, the anti woke crowd. And it, it's not that we want the it just to be constant, constant pendulum swinging back and forth. Like whose turn exactly. is it now? Who's in charge? I hope that ultimately it, it can be as open of a platform as possible. But Absolutely. it's like, do you think this will actually affect future policy as far as it comes to? Yeah. 
sites like Twitter. Fa- I mean, Facebook, I feel like it's done. Rest in peace, Facebook. I don't know. I feel like it's only good for <laughs> sharing photos of your kids and trying to sell uh, an old cabinet or furniture. And co- furniture and complaining, I think, is what Facebook I, should be for now. I, I actually get a, a decent amount of engagement. I'm like the libertarian king of, of Facebook. and But Ooh. the reason is because the way that I present stuff on Facebook is I you have to really consider algorithms when you're when you're posting or tweeting or whatever. And on Facebook, they want content that like grabs human engagement. So like human interest piece. So like if you looked at first glance, my uh my a lot of my posts would look like something you'd see on Upworthy or something like that, where it tells a compelling story of someone who against all odds did whatever or was, you know, whatever. But there's a policy implication behind each of those stories. So, like, I'll tell a story of a of a, a veteran uh, who was, you know, abused by police, and they, uh, you know, tased his service dog, and the service dog died, and then the police fought not to have the the uh, body cam footage released, and we helped them get it released, and now we're fighting for justice, and you know, everyone's it, it grabs people's attention and it goes viral on on Facebook. But it's we're not just talking about that single issue. We're talking about all the policies and the issues that allowed for something like that to even happen. So Facebook can be effective, but you have to be very like it's you can't use it the same way as Twitter or you will be permabanned, perma banned or shadow banned into oblivion, never to be seen again. So it's it, you do have to be careful on it, but there's a ton of people on it. So there, there's you know, it's it, it's it's a double edged sword there. But I from a policy standpoint, I think that I don't think government policy is going to change. Um, government's always going to use whatever they can to try to censor us through a third party proxy. That's how they've always done it. Um, and, uh, so I don't think that's going to happen. What I hope happens, what I actually really hope happens is that Twitter really does stick to this, you know, this vision of it being a true free speech platform and that it gets rewarded economically as a result that lots of people join it lots of people sign up for the for the eight dollar thing or whatever that they add more value added 11 services. now is it 11 they're now tra- they're gonna charge 11 now yeah wow. see it's already happening 40 already 40 percent increase that blast inflation <laughs> but you know but that they add more value and that people come to it advertisers come to it and all of that and here's why i want that because Elon Musk needs more money. No, the, the reason that <laughs> that I, I I want that to happen is the market responds to price signals. And if the market sees that free speech and you know open expression equals more money, then you're inevitably going to see the Facebooks and the Googles and the the uh, uh, Snapchats or whatever else. All, all of these other um, platforms that what's that <laughs> TikTok, my least favorite even TikTok. like you, you'll see that there will be a pushback we won't even necessarily see this like the um we'll see the results of this of them saying to government like look we have to allow more expression because we're going to lose our shirts on this i think that there is a potential for that happening um people forget that you know up until 2015 2016 Facebook was wide open. Like you could say pretty much anything. And in reaction to Donald Trump getting elected, the government got their hooks in and and the rest Mm -hmm. is history. But it could go back to that. Right. Because he was able to reach so many people in a way they couldn't control through social media. And then and that's when they started to be like, oh, we we need to make sure he does. Someone like him doesn't have this much reach again. Yeah. Yeah. They had started that on the on the margins. But that was the catalyst worldwide, not just in the U.S., to really start to put the the hooks into um to social media. So and the thing is they've been able to profit uh even doing that except for Twitter. Twitter's been losing money for a long time. But Facebook, you know, has been making money. And if Twitter is able to start being profitable, it's sort of like what's happening with ESG and DEI in the business world. As the economy is tightening up, a lot of companies are surreptitiously dropping and, and and unceremoniously dropping their ESG and DEI policies or just not. Is that true? Because that makes they, me they so it. optimistic to hear. That's they can't enforce it. I've news. talked with a lot of people in HR spaces and they're saying it's not, you know, headline news, but they're having to. They're losing money on this stuff. And the only reason they did it was because it, there was this very vibrant uh, economic environment where they could pretty much do whatever they wanted and still make money mm-hmm. thanks to endless uh, uh, fiat currency printing. And they were able to virtue signal 
uh, to their other, you know, corporate friends that they were doing all this great stuff, which they were doing nothing that none of this accomplishes anything, but Just basically the, hiring a bunch of people and giving them diversity, inclusion, diversity titles. jobs. Yeah, this was, this was the logical consequences of affirmative action that were warned about when we were little kids. Like there were people saying, you're going to have people, an entire race of people, the vast majority of whom will have gotten even if they even though they almost all of them probably would have been able to graduate even without those you know being uh, without those uh, i guess safeties put in place for them or those lower quotas put in place for them because those lower quotas quotas were in place the corporate uh, environment is going to look at them and say well, what are we going to do with these people they you know they 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 didn't we know that they didn't have to have the same standards as you know as the, wow. the white and asian graduates We'll put them in diversity hires and we'll put uh, them in the diversity. Now it's called so DEI insulting. department. And that they're being so rubber roomed. Insulting. They're being oh. rubber roomed. None of those folks end up in, very rarely do they end up in positions of corporate leadership. They're in HR oh, and no. DEI, it's right? Pandering. So they're stuck in middle management. They're, they're, they're doomed to mediocrity. And then that leads to ESG and all of these other things that are happening. And it's, it's bad policy, which creates bad policy, which creates bad policy. But going back to price signals, as the economy's tightening, these companies have to make money. Like they have to make money or they won't be able to virtue signal anything. Huh. I guess homelessness, they could virtue signal being homeless, but they, they, so what they're having to do is they're having to trim the fat there. So what I'm hoping happens is if Facebook can show, or if Twitter can show that this is profitable, a lot of these businesses are going to have to start doing this. So we'll see. I'm the eternal optimist. So we'll see what happens. Wow. It's almost like, it could be a uh, capitalism could kind of or supply and almost more important than virtue signaling. <laughs> almost, it's almost like uh, like capitalism uh, is has a self correcting mechanism built into it if allowed to. <laughs> almost like that. You mentioned TikTok. I have a theory about TikTok. Oh yes, I, I want think to know. because you know there's all this talk in the in the U.S. government about banning TikTok or greatly restricting TikTok. And they'll say, well, you know, they're they're spying for China and they're doing the bidding of China. Every social media company is doing the bidding of China and probably spying for China. Uh, even like companies like Disney and the NBA are caping for the Chinese yes. Chinese government. And like, so much information like from our universities uh, and research labs gets sneakily sent off to China. Like it's yeah. it's an insane amount of IP that ends up over there. University of Pennsylvania, where one of the places Joe Biden, you know, uh, accidentally left uh, documents, which I believe he's the one politician that says I accidentally left top secret documents in multiple locations. I actually kind of believe him that he'd forget that. But uh, 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 UPenn, uh, University of Pennsylvania, has the Penn Biden Center. That's where he oh. that's where that information was left. University of Pennsylvania has received something like 59 or 56 million dollars from Chinese from undisclosed Chinese sources. Every major company in the Western world is receiving funds and doing the bidding of the Chinese government. And yet the American government is picking on TikTok. My theory for why they're doing that is because TikTok isn't working with the U.S. government like Facebook and Twitter and Google oh. and YouTube because they're basically an extension of the Chinese government. They're like, no, we're not going to do that. And so because wow. they can't say well, we're not going to let you come here unless you spy for us like you like all the other social media companies do. They're instead saying, oh, it's because they're they're, you know, in bed with the chai -coms. Everyone's in bed with the chai -coms. So why do you suddenly care just about this company? That's my theory. I've had some pushback mm -hmm. on it, but that's my theory is that it's not because they're in bed with the chai -coms, It's because they're not in bed with the U.S. government. Or it's easier to focus on. It's like, what's easier to focus on? Just one one app That's that everyone too. knows where it is, That's or true too, yeah. or every serious <laughs> university and research lab and <laughs> however many companies. Oh. We must ban the entire political, yeah, technological and business establishment because they're in bed with the Chinese. Yeah, and TikTok like just got here. Like it's it's like it's kind of like last one in, first one out. It's something they could do. I don't know. That's a good point. It could just be that it's a it's an easy target for the the you know two minutes of hate. Um, I I like my theory though because it's more you know sinister. But we'll see. I like that. Yeah. We'll find out fifty years from now. <laughs> what do you think about the theory that TikTok is like uh, sends America the the dumbest algorithm possible or whatever? It's reinforcing just the worst 
most low IQ shit where it's like, and I don't even know what <laughs> Chinese TikTok looks like. Maybe we're looking at it now, but apparently, oh, Chinese TikTok is just teaching kids how to play the violin. And I was going to say, it's all like calculus and classical music and, you know, how to, <laughs> how to dry yourself. clean a shirt. No. Yeah. Uh, how and, to start and your own nail salon. So I, I think I, I, I would say that, I don't know. I mean, social media is kind of a lowest common denominator seeker anyway. I mean, I, I remember I'd look yeah. at Vine and I'm like, well, that was six seconds of stupid. And then you look at it or seven seconds or whatever. Then I look Vine. at another one. I'm like, yep, oh. another seven seconds of stupid. And uh, Orwell had the two minutes of hate. Vine was six seconds of stupid. And um, so, I mean, I there's a theory to that. I think, honestly, I think that you have a sheltered population that has its needs met um but has been kind of stuck in mediocrity like that the millennial and gen x or gen z uh age groups have basically had the entire system rigged for them um rigged in both ways rigged that they never have to want for anything but also if you want to try to get ahead you're gonna have to take on six figures in college debt and the job market sucks and you already have to have many years of work experience, which you can't have because you were in college and the cost of living is through the roof and you don't own anything. And uh, oh, also your parents and grandparents who you might inherit something from, they're going to live to be like 110. And so like yeah. you're just going to buy just, an Audi, live in Florida. Not yeah, exactly. They're going to hey. they're going to use all that stuff. You're stuck for nothing. And and so all we're going to offer you is, you know, a bunch of free stuff that's being paid for by generations that aren't even born yet. Also, the whole thing's going to crumble long before you reach retirement age. And so they're kind of like they're both sheltered and stuck in mediocrity. And so they act like spoiled brats very often. And, and it's kind of understandable. They, it, you know, it's like when you see a brat, you blame the parents. Well, when you see an entire generation and a half uh, acting a certain way, you can blame the generations that came before them for setting up the conditions for them to live that way in the first place. Who are they following? Bernie Sanders, Liz Warren. Like, yeah, that's the, this isn't they didn't make this happen. They were born into it. So I, that's sort of my theory with that. I, I'm sure maybe they're playing with the algorithm to try to make it look even dumber. But I mean, that's that's I, I think but it's also social media. It, love dumb shit. That? Like we do love, uh, we love our dumb shit. People like it. So. People like dumb shit. People really like dumb shit. It's like, it's now it's like America's funniest home videos, except <laughs> you don't yes. have to submit them anywhere and hope that they publish it. You just get to put the camera up to your face and go live, right? Like we're doing right now. We could do dumb shit here and this would go viral and then we'd become like famous and wealthy. Right. And then this would become the dumb shit show with Spike and Chrissy right. or Chris and Spike at your show. You know, and, people, uh, all I have to do is pretend I didn't know my boob was falling out of my shirt and boom, the ratings. Same. Go Dude, we could both do the same thing. Tits yeah. hanging out everywhere and, uh, and, and, you know, become incredibly insanely wealthy. And, you know, now we've fed the monster and, uh, but yeah, I, I, so, I mean, they might be playing with it, but I think people like watching dumb things unfold. Uh, and the, the uh, yeah. more you can delay the, the, the unfolding and they, it builds up the pace. It's like game of Thrones, you know, people were watching the slow burn, uh, and, and, and couldn't wait to see what happened. And then it was just like two seasons of dumb shit and everyone, you know, got what they truly God. wanted deep down. You're so right. Like libs of TikTok is our America's funniest home videos. Except yes. they all take place in a car by a trans person. Yes. Or in bed. Um, I, uh, America, I, this is you. Dun, dun, yeah. dun. Oh, so the thing so that gets me, and I realize I'm an, I'm an a geriatric elder millennial. I'm a millennial with male pattern <laughs> baldness. So I, I get that I don't understand what the kids are doing. But they're in bed making these videos. And like, I don't know if that's an aesthetic thing or if it's just that their crushing depression is that bad that they can't get out of bed and do something with their hair before going on TikTok and talking to potentially millions of people. But it just concerns me that like the thought of me, if, if you ever see me make a video of any kind and I'm just literally lying in bed, if it's not because like I've just had surgery and I'm letting you know I'm okay or I'm recovering from some you know grave illness or something like that, then maybe you should contact me and make sure like I'm in a safe place and I'm okay and I and I you know I'm I maybe talking with mental health people or something like put it this way when I had COVID last year about this time last year. I was very, very, very sick. And I, I didn't do any appearances because I could barely talk. And uh, I got pneumonia uh, and the whole thing. It was it was pretty bad. And I, uh, spoiler alert, I, I survived. But um, 
I didn't do any kind of videos or anything during that time, even when I started getting my voice back, because I felt like crap. And I didn't want to look like that in front of people. I didn't want people to worry about me. And, you know, wow, he's still in bed and he's on the couch. Is he OK? You know, and so I didn't. These people will do that. And and it's not because they're sick or anything. It's because they just it's like how they look doesn't matter or the fact that they're like li they're yeah, literally in bed. They, like, yeah, it's like if you it's can't depression. Even, it's like depression you talk. Can't even start your day. Why should I listen to anything you have to say? <laughs> you can't get the fuck out of bed. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care what your thoughts are. I don't know if you have like a brilliant <laughs> idea. They're rebelling against they're rebelling against Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson Throw said, make your bed. They said, we're on. not even getting out of yeah. bed. We're not staying. are we not making the bed. We're not even getting out of it. It's that thing when you, it. maybe when you were a kid where you try to make the bed while you're still in it. And you're like, no, I'm you like delay getting up. You're like, it's OK. I'm making it from inside the bed. I'm getting ready. The oh bed's always me because I'm just in it. Like this is this is the natural. <laughs> this is yeah. the natural. State I am of now. My, of my I've bed now become. Time part I, of the bed I am, we are i one. am become the bed yeah no it's <laughs> it's it's very sad it's it's an it's it's depressing to watch because i also i used to and i've i've, I've full disclosure i've dealt with chris crippling anxiety and depression so like i know what that's like and it's not sitting there crying it's sitting there like not even sure what it is you want to do and 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 not so i get why it bothers me is yeah. i can see the vibe of what they're going through of like this is their one thing that makes their brain feel good is going and talking about whatever in front of a bunch of people. And instead of someone saying, Hey, are you okay? Maybe you could go outside and get some sun and, you know, do something. They're all doing it too. They're all lying in bed going, yeah, same girl. And like it, and, and it's just, it's like a, a giant, like depression enabling festival that's that conversation sure if you want to do a video from your phone like from your phone in bed that should be to a therapist like you could be t putting that same energy towards like talking <laughs> yes. to someone who can help to, you to a, someone who can help you here there there are resources available and and it would be one thing if they were there doing peer support but it just feels like they're all enabling each other's it's like you want attention for being depressed and at the lowest, we've all had low points. Like we were talking about too, mm -hmm. like I've, I spent years like just anxious and I'm unable to move forward, yep. make decisions. Yep. Like yep. I, 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 some people call it ADD so pr was prescribed pills for it. Took them for a while. Stopped taking them. Maybe I'm just a, a person raw dogging life with ADD now. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was the point of that? Is that <laughs> why? No, so, why yeah, perfect <laughs> manifestation why the right goal, there of that. Why yeah. is the goal to broadcast your lowest? Like, because we've, our culture has supported broadcasting and getting likes for your lowest point in life instead of like, you could take that same amount of energy and that same amount of expression. It doesn't have, that's the thing. It's not public, but you have to point it towards someone like a therapist or a friend who can help you. But it's like, it's become so glamorized and. Yeah laziness is just okay because if you have a in some sort of title or some sort of thing oh i have i i'm i'm a this so this is okay i'm autistic so this is okay or like i'm even if you are depressed i feel like don't take that on like i'm hesitant to even take on a title of something that's wrong with me because there's such right. a permanence to that well and the thing is even if you are like i i will say i i've dealt i i'm i've I don't really I've reached a good point in my life where I don't really deal that that acutely with depression or anxiety, but I'm sure I'm certainly more likely to obsess on things or get anxious. And I know that about me and I can adjust accordingly. And like you said, kind of raw dog your way through it and actually use parts of that to your advantage. But it's different to to own something and then work through it so you can still thrive and say or and the, different between that and saying well i have this thing so i can't do anything now celebrate me for it and it, I, the, I think the peak of it that i saw was there was a video um where uh and the original video was of this kid who had uh, you could tell they had practiced where he was jumping on a, a trampoline and his friends would jump on it right before he'd come down so he'd go up even <laughs> higher and he reached a point they were in front of like a like a i think like four-story apartment building or condo building or something and they reached a point where he was as high as the top of that building he went like 70 80 feet in the air and he was doing this flip really fast he probably did like 40 flips before he came. it was wild and you could tell they had all and then when when he they actually did it they were all celebrating it was on and TikTok. landing on his like feet this, back on the trampoline no, no, I think he I don't not sure if he landed on his feet, but it was each time he the first few times he was landing on his feet because it was all to build up to him being able to right. go so high up that he was and he was flipping like literally this fast. And it was wild oh to God. watch. You could tell they had practiced for quite some time. They were all excited and everything. 
And so someone stitched, I think it's called stitching, stitched that video where they're next to it. And, uh, and there was, it was mostly white people. This will matter in a second. And the guy stitching it also white is lying in bed and he's reacting to it and going something along the lines of, he goes, the power of white privilege for someone to feel ah. this safe to do something like this. It's just amazing. Well, good for him, I guess. And I oh, thought, okay, well, first of all, it's, it is very sad that black people uh, are never allowed to excel in, uh, in uh, have in, fun, in be professional. I just saw a TikTok be, that be says professional or do well in video, gymnastics. It's terrible. A video, I think it was an app. Oh, fuck. I don't forget who it was, but this guy was going off saying that professionalism is a white thing imposed on black people because black people can't just be who they are. I was no. like, that's the most racist thing you could possibly say that's that is very, inherent in all black be who people. They, they are can't unprofessional. Be professional. Yeah. 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 And so I'm, I'm watching this and I'm like, yeah. So first of all, it is terrible how there are no well-known black gymnasts or, or, or athletes or anything like that. It's horrific. But I realize this person is looking at a bunch of, I, they're probably like teenagers and 20, like a bunch of kids. I call them kids, a bunch of kids who have obviously worked hard on this thing. And the first thing this white person thought was white privilege uh. and racism and, and and meanwhile, he hasn't gotten out of bed all day, probably. And I'm thinking, how much of this is you're coping with the fact that you've done nothing and hate it deep down and probably don't like yourself because you you may be either depressed or, or you know, in a bad part of life or whatever. And instead of owning that and doing the work to get through that, you're like getting angry at these kids who did something really cool. And it was fun to I mean, the video lasts like 15 seconds. It's a real it's white quick privilege. Thing you know what's great white about privilege. white privilege? It's like, oh, if, if you don't happen to be white, good. You can you don't have to try then because it's just about like the privilege of your skin color. It's such a cop yes. out. Mm -hmm. I, I think was watching every time I, I watch um, LeBron James or, uh, you know, anyone like that. And I just think of the massive white privilege that is allowed for him to. It wasn't it wasn't decades of hard work and dedication to his craft and and you know it, 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 refusing to to back down to things it's that it's his white privilege is, is why lebron james has done well and i'm as outraged <laughs> as anyone watching this i mean it's not all the, the white people in charge of basketball or that you know consume and watch basketball uh oh my god it's wild <laughs> we were watching dazed and confused last night and there was some mostly like white cast and there's like yeah, yeah, literally one token black guy friend, but we're watching it. And I was like, me and Frank, and I was like, I was like, oh my God, isn't this nice? Like, no one's talking about race. Like, <laughs> that, that does, it didn't even come up once. A bunch of white people just have a black friend, and race doesn't come up once. They just have conversations about other shit. I'm like, oh, yeah, this was made like, what was it in the 90s, I think? I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Early 90s, I think, early mid 90s. I remember watching like, I mean, you could even and and you could go the other way where it's mostly black people like uh well, the one with Steve Urkel, Family Matters, and I think they probably had one or two episodes the 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 you know standard issue racism bad episodes. That's fine, whatever. Um, but like the show wasn't about we're a bunch of black people, right? Like it was about whatever that it was about. Steve yeah, Urkel, basically. it's a but nice family. It was about family. whatever the show was about. Yeah. it was just about a nice family, exactly. And so it's just it's sad that. I mean, there are times where it's valid to discuss race all the time on everything, I don't think is it. And I think it's a it, it's a cop out. It's a way to cop out on things. And and it's not consistent. Like um, there's that meme that uh, it shows a uh, it's like someone looking at a, a TV screen or a movie screen or whatever. And it shows a uh, it shows a black person holding a gun to a white person. And and it says, no, that's racist. It's 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 depicting black people as violent. And then it shows a black person holding a gun up to a, a black person. It says that's racist. It's depicting black people as violent, uh, black on black violence, or or something. And then it shows a white person holding a gun to a black person. It says that's racist. It's showing white supremacy. And then it shows uh, a white person holding a gun to a white person. And it says that's racist. Where's the black cast? And like, there's no <laughs> black people in this cast. And it was like, it doesn't matter what happens. Everything is racist. It's like uh, everything is gay from team america it's now everything is racist and gay i wonder if it's like i don't know if this is a conscious or unconscious thing it's almost like it's trying to move us towards like uh i think it's a brave new world where where 
I think that's the book by Alice Huxley where people's their roles are des, are like declared from birth basically yep. based yep. on like and they've been sort of bred to have certain jobs and it's like they're dialing back the like okay the racism it's like and the victim status shit is starting earlier and earlier right like 90s we solved racism wasn't a big deal gays had their rights (laughs) everything was cool and now they're like dialing it back now it's like oh everything is such a racism is on everybody's mind and now they're even dialing back like the gender thing because it's like oh the certain genders are problematic so it's almost like they're dialing that back getting human beings to be just these like smooth ambiguous life forms like in the in the event or like in an effort to stop an ism or uh, i don't it's so fucking ass backwards but it's almost like it to me it feels like this there's this pull of like you're you're just being stripped of your humanity because everything that about you that makes you human is somehow being twisted to be problematic like oh i was born a girl but i don't feel like i'm a girl even though I'm a kid and you have phases where you don't feel like a girl all the time, but it's like the powers that be take a phase and they go, Oh, we have to strip away your femininity. Cause that's problematic. And you have to be a non-binary or trans or whatever. Yeah. So my theory about a, a lot of the stuff we've been talking about, like, you know, people staying in bed all day and, 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 you know, people looking for racism and bigotry and all things. And then on it, on, on very often proposing, more racism and bigotry uh, as a uh, as a solution to that. Um, the, it, you can boil up all or most of these things down into general antisocial behavior, like anti-people behavior. And the thing is, in a normal environment, these things can't thrive very well because no one wants to hire you. No one wants to be, you know, associated with you. You know, people don't want to be involved with you. The people don't want to be associated with you. Yeah, like, like it's, you're difficult. It's, it's, you're, your like, whole yeah, you're being is difficult. being difficult. Like you can't you're, do your job because everything is racist or misogynist. It's like, just make exactly. the fucking latte, Susan. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's, but that's the thing. Susan doesn't have to make the latte anymore. Or if they She's do, like, you know, yeah. they, they demand the top thing. The, the 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 ridiculous amount of money for it, and the reason for that is because you've coupled the welfare state with forced mediocrity. Oh, you want to be able to survive? We'll take care of that. You're good. You'll take care of that. You'll even have a little bit of comfort. It won't be, you know, you'll watch other people, uh, you know, do things you'll never accomplish and hate them for it, but you will be fine. You're not going to starve to death. You're going to have a a house over your a roof over your head and and all of that. You'll you'll be okay and you'll have some level of comfort. Here's your phone. Go look and tell everyone how terrible how terrible your life is for the rest of your life. And if so, if you but, see someone else succeeding, you'll say it's because of uh, white privilege or some other type of privilege. White privilege, racism, colorism, whatever. But also. Oh, you want to thrive? You want to do well, but you're not already like independently wealthy or have wealthy parents? No. Like the level of of uh debt you're going to have to run up, the amount of um obstacles that are going to be in your way in the terms of licensing and taxes and everything else and regulations. Oh, and also the the environment for jobs is terrible here because we've intentionally poisoned the well for major corporations to be able to not have local competition because all their uh, base of labor operations are in other countries. They don't want to have to compete locally here. They just want to have the stuff made here and brought back here for you to consume. So they've created an environment where for most people, the only real option they have unless they're among the very small percent of overachievers is mediocrity. And so that's baked into the cake that they're just going to have this comfortable mediocrity. And then they're handed a phone where they can talk to the whole world and be, be as big of a star as anyone else. And so it's sort of encouraging people and incentivizing people into antisocial behaviors because we also are never around each other. Most of the people we communicate with, we're doing it right now. Most of the people I'm going to communicate with today are (laughs) nowhere near me. So it just encourages anti, not this, but in general, that environment encourages antisocial behaviors and it manifests itself in all these different ways. And it's very unfortunate because the whole purpose, those social behaviors are why we thrived as a species and all the other uh, you know, higher level apes didn't because we are the descendants of the people who figured out we got to, you know, ape together strong, right? So like we... Now we're undoing all of that and engaging in antisocial behaviors, which we now are at the level where we can do that, but it's destroying the fabric of everything. So it's, it's, you know, I, I hope that we reach a point of saturation and that more and more people realize that's a problem. Uh, I do think people are waking up to it. 
Um, I, I hope that we are about to have a recession. Like that's going to happen. It's going to be pretty bad. I hope that part of that recession is a correction in a lot of things. You know, we talked about correction on social media and, and DEI and ESG. I hope there's also a correction in people realizing like you kind of have to act right if you want to be able to do well. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. How do you see that? Because I was under the impression the recession has already been here. How do you see that manifesting in, in more observable ways? So we are and have been for a very, very long time, like pretty much since the TARP bailouts. In fact, even TARP? just before then. So TARP. So back in 2008, oh, when, the, when the economy crashed and, the, and um, they called them TARP, I forget uh, what, it, what that acronym was, a T-A-R-P, and it was the bailouts. And they were like almost a trillion dollars. And back then that was insane. And now we throw a trillion dollars at stuff like it's nothing. It's funny. but um, Troubled Asset so, Relief Program, TARP. Troubled Asset Relief Program, yeah, yeah. And so even before then, it's since the mid-2000s at least, we've been every single year in, once you adjust for inflation, we have been in a recession. Like every single year we've been in a recession uh, for quite some time. We are about to be in a recession where it's like 2007, 2008, 2009, where entire sectors of the economy are seeing double digit losses, where people cannot find any kind of job, where no one is hiring, uh, and where uh, hopefully there's some healthy deflation that comes from that. There wasn't in, in 2009 and 2010, not like there should have been thanks to the Fed, but I hope that that happens. But regardless, it's going to be really ugly, like really fast, really ugly. And, and I feel bad for Gen Z people in particular because they've never been alive during a time when the economy worked for hmm. most people. And that 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 sucks. And it, and it manifests itself in the way that they act because they don't they don't know that there's a better way. Well, it's like every generation has its own challenge and maybe Gen Z kids will grow up to be exactly what we need i hope and so i hope I've, they rebel against it yeah, yeah. i've already I noticed so. like they're it seems like millennials like we're the last generation to be like susceptible to the to the woke shit like taken hostage I, by it like oh i, I could get fired if i don't <laughs> if i don't like uh let this person uh do tiktoks in their car during work hours kind of a thing like i feel like <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, Gen Z yeah, is more hopefully. like, no, we see what you're trying to do. And it's also the woke shit is now coming from the authorities and all yes. you know, kids, adolescents, they're, they're constantly testing the bounds and they want to be, when you're young enough, you kind of want to be anti-authority until you get convinced that to be in line with the authority is to be anti-authority, which is, I think where a lot of millennials are. That's wild. I, I remember, X. I remember like family guy, they had a thing, you know, they'll do those little segues where it'll be like a little mini joke. They'll be like, that's like, that reminds me of the time that blah, blah, blah. And you can tell it was just a joke they wanted to throw in there. Um, and one of them was Stewie saying, uh, I, I remember that time. Uh, that that reminds me of the time that I bombed in in at Woodstock. And so he's there and he's, he's uh, strumming a banjo or something. And he's going, establishment, establishment, you always know what's best. <laughs> and uh, and what's funny is the joke yeah. was that, you know, he you know, he would that people would think that the establishment knows what's best. And then what's wild is now Family Guy unironically does that. Like these shows unironically do it. And so anytime I would see people make a, a you know, a TikTok about how great Fauci is or, you know, people like pretending that Joe Biden's the coolest guy ever or whatever. I just picture Stewie at Rudstock strumming his banjo and saying, you're singing for the establishment. Also, I was wrong before. Team America wasn't everyone is gay. It's everyone has AIDS. So now uh, it's everyone has autism and okay, AIDS. Okay, yes. Important distinction there. Important um, distinction. What do you feel about this comment from Andre? Libertarianism was just a way for leftists to infiltrate right-wing parties. Ooh, he's, them uh, fighting to words. The yeah, he's referring to the Republicans. So the, the reality is that uh, libertarianism is a belief in uh, individual self-ownership and non-aggression. It is the basis of uh, what many call right-wing thought now. So like conservatism, all of the various uh, aspects of, of limited government and freedom of expression and everything else, that started with the with Bastiat and Spooner and Thomas Paine, and then later with uh, uh, von Mises and, and Rothbard. That's all libertarianism. Like that's the basis of it. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure where he's getting leftism from. We're like the opposite of leftists. So 
um, you know, on on economic fronts, on on social fronts, uh, on, on any kind of social front, we recognize that it's government that created this this nightmare environment that we're in in the first place. So I I without knowing more context, I'm not sure what he means, but definitely not. Okay, I was just trying to trigger you with the comment. It didn't work. Um, from Fritz, this guy needs to have his own book if he doesn't already. I agree. I, people say that. And the thing is, uh, there are two things that are lacking, and that's libertarians with podcasts and <laughs> libertarians libertarians who have written books. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not against doing it. I'd have to have a subject, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um fritz t t give me a subject you tell me what you want me to write i'll, I'll you should I'll title your book spike spike it or like spike the ball or um spike the ball no yeah. the story of that's i could write about my my extremely bad and brief youth sports career um and <laughs> you, I write a book it has nothing it. To, you have nothing <laughs> nothing to do with nothing politics to do at with all. yeah you're spike just like it. oh what a boring autobiography and it's spike it, the story of a failed jewish youth athlete and uh <laughs> i could have entire yes. chapters of being picked last by my friends who would be like listen i love you you're not good at dodgeball i'm like no i get it i'm not good at dodgeball so and your we'll catchphrase could be like spike it you know like when life gets you down it, you yeah. get picked last for that team spike it spike it and spike it means get don't do well and and then <laughs> and then eventually eventually they'll just kind of let you observe because you didn't really want to do it anyway. <laughs> it's funny because i'm actually more athletic now than i was as a kid and it's entirely because of like taking my health and fitness seriously because of MS and trying to stay ahead of my, Oh, for those who don't know, I have multiple sclerosis. So I'm now, if I do, I'm way more active now than I was as like a 14, 15 year old. It's funny. Yeah. That's the, that's the only time in your life. You can kind of like, you can eat shit all the time. You don't like, you're naturally sort of at early when we were kids, we were naturally active because there were no real video games. I don't know. I had a Sega Genesis, but I wasn't like, Ugh! like I would just be like, all right, the occasional Indiana Jones, the occasional Sonic the Hedgehog, and then I'd just be like out with my rollerblades. But yeah, it's good to be like consciously as an adult looking after your health. I did because I definitely didn't as a kid. I uh, I would I would smoke weed and play Goldeneye uh, until like my thumbs hurt. Um, my <laughs> thumbs were great, very athletic thumbs. I I wish I if I had been born. If I if I had been born maybe 15, 20 years later, I'd probably be like a pro gamer. Um, if I were any, I'm not sure if I was any good at it, but I certainly if I was good at it, I would have been. But I, I I played a lot of games. I actually stay away from any kind of video gaming consoles or anything like that, because that is a very strong addictive trigger for me. Like I, I have an addictive personality anyway. And um, like I even one time I was at a, a this was a few years ago now. I was at a friend's house and he had a PS for whatever it was at the time and he had like just some like racing game and i played it and within it, very quickly three hours went by and i'm like yep no i should definitely not be playing video games Whoa. um so yeah so that's that's definitely something i have to stay away from but um was it mario yeah, kart I was not, uh no 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 it was like yeah it wasn't mario kart it was a um <laughs> It was some kind of racing game. I don't know what it was, but it was it was fun. But I was like, wow, that happened fast. And it reminded me of when I thought maybe I could drink alcohol on occasion. And I went to pour a second glass of Riesling and realized I'd polished off three bottles. It was like that same kind of vibe where I'm like, oh, I I'm, I, I'm, I can't do drugs, but I also can't play video games either. So, OK, yeah, we're learning. Yeah, that's what <laughs> we're it's learning. It's yes. all about. <laughs> we're growing as people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It wasn't F Zero. No, oh, F Zero. So on uh, Super Nintendo, that was another game I would play. I was a little too young to be getting high, but I would play that game until my thumbs bruised too. So absolutely. I wonder what human evolution, because they show like how we, uh, like you know, maybe if we, if you believe that we evolved from like apes and how like our hands have changed from like being able to yeah. hold and swing on trees. Well, it's like, what are humans gonna look like, thumbs. like hundreds of years from now? Yeah, are we just gonna be a, a hand <laughs> with all thumbs, <laughs> or are well, thumbs gonna is, be like? huge you know <laughs> it it comes down to who's breeding right so if oh true if the i mean i'm not trying to say anything but like if the the pro gamers are the ones that are really populating out there then yeah they're gonna be hook hook hand thumb monsters so yeah i come from a long line of gamers and you're just gonna be like, <laughs> like this giant 
Like you'll literally have hands that look like a controller. It's like controller cradle shaped. Yeah. You can literally just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what's that thing that old people get where they like, it's bad. They like hunch over, but it's like, no, I'm actually just a gamer. Like I have evolved. No, I'm built for this. Yeah. No, I, I don't <laughs> yeah, have, yeah. Uh, I don't have arthritis or uh, uh, crepitus or anything like that. I'm literally, this is, I'm, ide I'm the ideal gamer. Watch, see, look, I'm sitting down and now I'm perfect. I can do this for 15, 15 days straight. Someone mentioned uh, pilot wings. Everyone's bringing back my childhood, and I, I think I like it. Pilot wings. Yeah, that was a game, game on uh, Nintendo sixty. Was that Super Nintendo or sixty four? I think it was Super Nintendo, and that was um, that was the the second time I got high. I played pilot wings for many hours and wow. um, listened to the Busta Rhymes uh, album, and um, and it was a spiritual experience. <laughs> That's a direct quote. Someone needs to make a meme of me saying that yes. with my face, like looking pensive next to it. I'm writing it. I'm writing down so I can clip this out. Okay. <laughs> Busta about, Rhymes, well, Pilot writing, Wings, Busta Reed. Rhymes, yeah. who shot Biggie. Um, shot Biggie, yes. <laughs> tell me about the You Are the Power nonprofit. Sure. Absolutely. So, um, one of the reasons I even got involved, I didn't actually even get involved in the Libertarian Party until shortly before I ran for the nomination. And the reason for that is I believe not, and I still do, the Libertarian Party has a place, but the movement can't be led by a political party. That doesn't happen. Like the, the Republican Party didn't lead the conservative movement, destroyed it actually. The Democratic Party didn't lead the progressive movement. Um, it was always people who were working in the culture to spread their ideas. That's that's always how ideas are spread. Um, exceptions to that are like the Communist Party. Well, the way they spread their ideas are through force and coercion and mass murder. So we don't want to emulate that. Again, the Libertarian Party has a place. And I, I actually largely like the they've unveiled their decentralized revolution plan. And I like most or all of, of, of what they're what they're planning to do there. I think it's great. But we need to be spreading the ideas and solutions of liberty outside of a political party. And we have to do mm -hmm. it by reaching people where they are on issues that they care about. And that's what You Are the Power does. So if there is someone, for example, I'll give an example. If there's a, a someone in, the, the, these are not hypotheticals, these all happen. If there's a, uh, I mentioned the one about the uh, the the, um, the um, veteran who um, was beaten by the police and who they uh, tried to uh, block the body cam footage. We helped to get that released. We're continuing to help with that to try to get accountability for the people who did that to him. Uh, there was a lady in Indiana, uh, her home burned down. The insurance company gave her an RV to live in while they were, for the year plus it took to rebuild her home. The zoning board tried to steal her land uh, by uh, condemning it because she had two residences on her property, even though, even though one of them was burned to the ground. We helped her to get justice for that. She just moved into her into her home uh, last September or October. Um, uh, we've helped with a lot of charitable efforts where uh, there are liberty friendly, liberty loving people who are trying to help their communities entirely voluntarily without any government help. We help with that. Uh, there was someone who's uh, was running the only homeless shelter in his city. And uh, the city shut it down because they were trying to get federal funds to deal with the homelessness wow. crisis. And they weren't going to get it if some guy was doing it himself without any taxpayer money. And wow. homeless people died as a result of that. We helped him with that. We're continuing to help them with that. Uh, there's a lady right now who's doing a diaper drive in Pleasant Hill. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to remember the state that's in. And, uh, and, Mi and we're uh, Missouri with or that. Minnesota? I think it's Missouri or Minnesota. Yes, I don't I think know. I, was looking uh, at I know it's Pleasant Hill. It's it's wherever Pleasant Hill is, and we're we're helping with that. That's something that we just uh, got onto yesterday. Um, so I I only know brief details on that, but um, we're that's what we do. We find people who are in need on all different fronts, and we organize our our growing community and network of libertarians. We're over two thousand strong. We're in all fifty states, and we help people to organize for help on things that they need. Yeah, there it is, Pleasant Hill, Missouri. There you go. You were right, Missouri. Um. You're a comedian, so you know all the cities, right? <laughs> yes, I keep track of the ones that don't want me. Um, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm Pleasant Hill, <laughs> home, home of the of the incident that uh, that made uh, Chrissy persona non grata in uh, in Missouri. But um, <laughs> we we look for people who are help, or actually, in most cases, they find us. 
and we help them. We help people to organize. We help them to learn how to be organized. We offer training modules and, and educational materials and things like that. And we use that to build a network of people who are working together voluntarily to help each other and to hold government to account and using that as a way to spread the message that we do best when we're most free. And the problems that we're facing are usually as a result or at least being made worse by the fact that there's too much power in the hands of too few people. And when we fight to take the power back, we do better. That's what You Are the Power does. We are, you know, it's, it's hard to, to knock it down to just one thing because we're doing so many different things, but they all are help people grow a, a network in a community of people that are, are organized and excited. Uh, and I guess for lack of a better word, weaponized to do more good in their communities and sh in doing so demonstrate to them and have them demonstrate to themselves uh, the fact that they did this because they have way more power than they ever knew. That's why we call it. You were the power. And uh, if you would like to join us, if, if you want to be a part of this, we would invite uh, everyone watching this to join us. If you go to youarethepower.net, you can sign up to, right, right up there where it says become a member. You can do it there. Membership is free. We'd love to have you be a part of it. We obviously also take donations. Any nonprofit needs that. Uh, but more importantly, uh, so there are all these different memberships. The paid memberships come with like merchandise and swag and Ooh. you want to shell out 500 bucks, you get to have a phone call with me. But there's wow. no hierarchy of... There's no hierarchy of membership. If you join up for the free membership, you are every bit as much of a member as any other member. You just don't get like the t-shirt and the sweater and stuff like that. But you just don't get we'd the love swag to have bag. you be a part of it. Hmm? <laughs> you just don't get the swag bag. You don't get the swag bag. You don't get the swag bag or the phone call, but you are a part of the, the You Are The Power membership and uh, and you're in our membership network and you get all access to all the training uh, modules and the, the community network we're building and everything else. We're working on a, a mobile app and uh, all sorts of exciting stuff coming in 2023. So stay tuned, but we'd love to have you be a part of it. You are the power.net. I think you should add to the blaze category. Like you also get a volleyball that says spike it on it. <laughs> That's we make a new map, a new package for a yeah. thousand dollars. It comes with the uh, signed <laughs> spike it, uh, limited edition spike it volleyball and a uh, uh, uh advanced copy of, of your spike book, it. <laughs> spike it, the Jew who was always last. And, and it comes with, this is the worst category, and I had to pay the most. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but we, we're only going to make like 10 of those books. So it's, it's, wow. it's a collector's item. It's don't remove limited. it from its, its wrapping. Don't, don't read it. It's not a, it's not a good, not, book, no, it's but not it's for rare. Reading. It's a coffee it's table. Not good. It's not, it's not a reading book. It's not a reading book. It's at the pages are blank, but don't open it. We don't want it's you to know It's such a limited run. Of, like you literally just go to Staples and you print out your own yes. 10 copies. Yes, we're, I'm going to print it out on my old uh, old printer with the th and I'm going to leave the little things on the side that it would use to to crank up the the pages. The is that before your time? The, the printing things press? you'd have to. No, uh, so back in the day, like this was up until like the early '90s, printers uh, couldn't just like shoot out a page. It would it would use the there would be these things on the side that the had paper, holes in like them. The holes, yes, of course, yeah, you have to peel yeah, them so, off. It's going to be printed on that. I'm not removing the holes. I'm not doing that. You can do that if you want. That keeps its value. It's going to be stapled together on, on the left side, three staples across the left side. And uh, I might put it in one of those Trapper Keeper binders oh, and uh, yes. and write it in a Sharpie, write the name of the book. And uh, we're going to do seven of them. And so for $1,000, you can have one of those. It's not a good book. I haven't even written it yet. It's not good. And it's not. you're not going to like it. It's not a reading book. It's a collecting book. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Take it to the beach and just keep it in your bag. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those. Take it to the beach and enjoy the beach. Don't worry <laughs> about the book. The book is the book will be just there later. Let your it's beer nothing on there, it. you know. Nothing is there that's going to help you in any real way. Okay. But but it's it it will assuredly gain value over time. Why did why did the paper have to have the perforated edges on it? Was they it didn't have the in a ream or something that they didn't have the advanced technology of wow those are the days <laughs> and then i would think of cool things time. to do with the edges like i would take the edges and i would fold them back and forth on each other and make like a little Wrap accordion with yeah. it yeah 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 it was it's you know kids today don't know the joys that they're missing out on no like you just could do a lot more paper. with a lot less we just had wrapping fun it around a show. pencil. Yeah, yeah. So much we would do this do. thing where you stick your hands in that way, and then someone sticks their hand, in, and then you look through it, and you see a butthole. We had fun just we, doing that stuff. We would make S's that were really obnoxious, 
Yes. And, and once you knew, but you wouldn't tell people how to make it, they'd have to figure it out themselves. But I'll tell you, because now it doesn't matter. You would write three vertical lines and then three vertical lines. I forget what you do after that, but then you and would, then you would make, more it lines. would make this diamond looking, uh, Stussy or Stussy S. Oh my and, God. And, uh, are you going to make, are you going to make that? I don't have a piece of paper. I do it. But, Actually, you know, it's only these two. The, yeah. It's we only built two sets. Older millennials and Gen X people built the 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 society you're living in, but only the good parts. Even it? And I don't even know if this is right. Yes, that's it. That's literally it. That's you already have one written, or you just yeah, did that. I just whipped it up. Okay, that's how good we were at this. Like, yeah, she casually did that from memory. Right. It's like riding just a bicycle. My, yeah, and it's gonna. Did that's you just sign it? Be the cover of your book. Spike it. Oh, spike. <laughs> 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 spike it that's it right there that's it please take a picture of that and send it to me i'm gonna drop okay. that later we like book coming soon and uh and get people real excited <laughs> I, the thing is like if you've watched this don't tell people it's not going to be good we're not going to tell people that no. until it's right. out and again i'm only trying to drop like seven of these things so it's not i'm not worried now about mass audience seven? yeah <laughs> it it's ten. gonna be seven that's i mean if you're charging a thousand dollars for a book that is going to be bad both in the 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 quality of the writing and the production quality like it's not a good book but it's rare Mm -hmm. and and you know people, people like, like scarcity that. it's why people the like scarcity Trump's nfts all sold out you know there was only a certain it, amount this is like an nft that you can touch <laughs> yeah like a drawing <laughs> yeah it's a, drawing. Can... <laughs> it's a drawing on paper with a sharpie yes i was told that i needed to redo this in black marker so oh there you go oh that's like sharp it. yeah no please send me a picture of that because we're going okay. to I might just take a screenshot of you holding it and say, Chrissy My Mayer, is Mayer or Meyer? It's Mayer. You were right. Mayer. Chrissy Mayer would like you to know that this book is terrible. I'm going to be your new marketing director, basically. <laughs> I'm going to handle all your- For This book, yeah. No, this we're going to make $7,000. Mm -hmm. We're going to make $7,000. That's, you know, it's not- it's, We're not it's looking not, to make it killing here. We got to make some walking around money. We're looking to make $7,000 and no more from this. <laughs> That's it. That's it. This isn't about wealth. It's not no. about it's not about increasing anyone's knowledge. No. It's not about art. It's not it's about seven thousand dollars. It's, <laughs> it's this book. Well, thirty five hundred because we're gonna split it fifty fifty. We're trying to this grift is about hundreds of thousands of dollars. We just want seven thousand dollars. We're grifting thirty five three point five K each. We're just trying to get our our our, our beaks wet and yes. we need some walking around <laughs> money. You know, I'm trying to have a nice vacation to the Keys in some point, and it'd be nice to have some good money to go. You know, what when we get there and all that. Like this is that's, that. Yeah. That's really all this is about. Enough for about a Florida more. vacation. We're not asking for much. Yeah, this is yeah Florida vacation. Not even like a Hawaii vacation. A Florida no. vacation. That's literally all it is. Not looking to leave the country. Minus the oh, cost minus the cost of zero. Of course. Well, no, because I already have. So we already have some like cost that we've already i guess you're supposed to factor that in but i'm not going to because i bought this stuff back my parents bought it in the 90s and it's in the attic i've got the 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 rimmed paper i've got the the uh the 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 uh, hewlett packard uh or packard bell printer um that was before hewlett like, joined on like we already got it i've got i'm lousy with sharpies and i've got at least like six trapper keepers so we're wow. good. Like there's really no cost. And oh, also you have to pay low overhead. So that's so where we're there's the the overhead's low. You're paying for the shipping. Um and uh and we may make you pay Chrissy's commission too. Like I, I haven't oh, yeah. I may want to keep a, all seven thousand. I need an art fee for this, you know, like <laughs> oh yeah, I and the art this fee. Look, this might look easy, like I just pulled this out of my ass, but like this is the result of uh I twenty like plus years of life. I like brewing that, that design. I like it. Uh, I like God, it. You had some very interesting tweets about Martin Luther King Day. And I just didn't realize uh, everything hit, the it, FBI did to him. And I had no idea. Like, why don't they teach any of this in school? What do you think is the most <laughs> I wonder why? Thing? Maybe I could pull up this letter. This uh, this was a letter that you shared on your Twitter feed. Yeah. Uh, so this is a letter. So a little bit of context on this on this this letter so the fbi as part of their co-intel pro uh program which was a counterintelligence program that's what co-intel pro meant and basically anyone who spoke out 
against uh, the uh, the war machine, the military industrial complex, the Republican and Democratic parties, anyone who spoke out at all against the establishment. It didn't matter if they were libertarians. It didn't matter if they were conservatives or progressives or centrists or communists or anything else. It didn't matter if you uh, if you if for any reason were speaking out against the system, they would and, and reached any level of prominence, they would destroy you. They would do everything they could to destroy you. First, they would try to pressure you to stop. And if that didn't work, then they would start making up things about you, spying on you constantly, harassing you, surveilling you, slandering you to the public, leaking information that either wasn't true or wasn't anyone's business to try to, to, try to destroy your life. Um, and then if that didn't work, they'd try to get you to kill yourself. And that's this letter. This letter was written wow. by the FBI and sent to, to uh, Dr. King, and it was written supposedly by uh, by a black man, uh, or it, mm. it, it was it was supposedly written by a black man um, to tell Dr. King how terrible he was and to threaten that information was going to be released in I think 34 days or something like that if he didn't kill himself. He didn't wow. kill should himself. We do, should we do a dramatic uh, reading? Sure. It's it's pretty long, but it's uh, so I mean, the thing is, it's basically several paragraphs of insults, uh, okay. vague insults with no real accusation. And then at the end, it says something along the lines. If you want to go to the last paragraph, that'll kind of okay. sum up what. So, King, there is only one thing left for you to do. You know what it is. You have just 34 days in which to do this exact number has been selected for a specific reason. It has definite practical significance. Can. They can't. Also, the FBI can't spell. Uh, you are done. <laughs> wow, there, significant sign it, with significant. two Fs. Significant, uh, sign and that's significant. also it would be significance. But it's significant. The FBI is not smart, folks. Uh, no. You are done. There is but one way out of out for you. You better take it before your filthy, ab abnormal, fraudulent. They they at least uh, wow. fix that fraudulent self is bared to the nation. So he didn't wow. take the baby. Didn't kill himself. And shortly after this was written and he received it, he was assassinated. In 1999, a federal jury ruled that the FBI was an accomplice in Dr. King's assassination. Guess how many people were held accountable for that? None. Yep, none. No one. A federal says, jury. You, it says it is all there on your record, your sexual orgies. Listen to yourself. Listen to yourself, you filthy, abnormal animal. Yeah, abnormal yeah, animal. Yeah. yeah. Oh so this is how they treated people. And they did this. They, they murdered Fred Hampton, uh, 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 a guy by the name of Leonard Peltier, who was part of the American Indian movement. Uh, he's in prison for a crime that a court, an appeals court, said he did not commit. But they did not release him. Because, they were, because the court was told that for national security reasons, he had to stay in prison. So he's still in prison. Like the court said he didn't do the crime, that he was accused of murder. Uh, and after multiple attempts to frame him for murder, they finally convicted him. But since then, a court has a an appeals court has said they don't have evidence that you actually did this. You have to stay in jail because they said you have to. So anyway, the COINTEL program, uh, um, MLK was one of the people they targeted, and uh, and uh, they they did absolutely horrific things. Uh, they've done this to many people. There's a lady that I bring up that isn't talked about a lot because she wasn't a prominent name, but her name was Viola Lu Liozzo. I think I'm saying that correct. And she was a civil rights protester. She was from up north and she uh, came down to the south to participate in like the freedom rides and the sit-ins at lunch counters and stuff like that. She was murdered by Klan members, one of whom was an FBI agent. And so uh, FBI informant, uh, but he worked very, very closely with the FBI. The FBI didn't want that to get out. So they slandered Viola Leo, Leo, Liuzzo, I think I'm saying that correctly. They slandered her as a communist who abandoned her family uh, to do heroin and uh, and sleep with black men. None of this was true. Like she, she had not abandoned her family. She was not a heroin addict. None of that was true. Wow. But they said it about her. And so the press didn't talk about it much because she seemed like kind of an unsavory character. So not only did they, and no one was ever held accountable, many, many years later when no one cared, they released the fact that it was an FBI informant that murdered her. Oh. And so- the uh, and again, it's one of those things they released it many years later where people go, That's terrible, but they Forgot, don't care because it happened decades care. ago, yeah, yeah, it just doesn't matter, and it's not relevant to now, uh, of course, because the government doesn't do this stuff anymore, and so that's the that's the reality of how the FBI acts. And so now, fast forward to yesterday, uh, the FBI puts out that ridiculous tweet, 
uh, and I, I blast them on Facebook about it too. On on uh, on on uh, they post it on Facebook as well, honoring Dr. King and his memory and all the stuff that he did for justice and and, and everything else. And of course, the comments is just the replies is just filled with people going, "You mean the guy you killed?" <laughs> The guy you wow. slandered and the guy that you tried to 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 kill and the and the guy that you the guy that successfully did kill and the guy that you tried to get to kill himself. Yeah, there it is. Um on his 40th anniversary of on this 40th anniversary of MLK Day as a federal holiday, the FBI honors one of the most prominent leaders of the civil rights movement and reaffirms its commitment to Dr. King's le legacy of fairness and equal justice for all. The FBI. So I wrote, the organization who spied on uh, Martin Luther King, slandered him, tried to convince him to kill himself and was likely involved in his assassination, would like you to know they think he was a great guy. Like, this uh. is, I was in favor of abolishing the FBI long before they did the stuff they're doing to Trump or or the stuff they did with the Steele dossier or any of that. This is who the FBI is. They're not a uh, law enforcement organization. By their own metrics, they fail in uh, successful law enforcement 60% of the time. By their own <laughs> metrics, they suck as a law enforcement organization because they're not a law enforcement organization. They are not about protecting the public. They are an explicitly political, they are a Stasi. They are a political organization whose purpose is to destroy the lives of anyone who tries to upset the establishment. And that's it. So if you know if there's someone in D.C. who claims they're fighting the establishment and they're not constantly being slandered, then they're lying to you. Because if they were having any real effect, then oh. the FBI would go after them and destroy them. And now the CIA, too. Wow. It's like a badge of honor. Yeah, if you look yeah, at the comments, they're just being blasted. Yeah, the Libertarian <laughs> Party. Libertarian Party honors him. You violated privacy through warrantless wiretapping and try to convince him to commit suicide. Your honors are a total farce. I like this one from exactly. Royce Lopez. This tweet is like Buffalo Bill wearing the skin of his victims. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know who Royce Lopez is, but that's incredible. That's a good one. Yeah, He's, that's uh, literally it. Yeah, everyone go like that that tweet. Host, um, um, and, yeah, <laughs> ROTC Radio. Yeah, go, everyone go follow assist. whoever. I yeah. hope he's not like a Nazi or something. And we're no, he's one of my follow. friends. Well, people probably oh, okay. call him one. He's, uh, he host hosts Day Revenge of the Sis. Okay, all right, well, go go follow Royce. Um, But yeah, he, I, I it's, it, but this, and we were talking about, uh, oh, good, New Hampshire, wait. Everyone weighed in. Everyone's like, you suck. We all came together. You know that mm -hmm. meme where, like, everyone has their swords pointed together, and it's, like, all these different groups, and they're all allied for a thing? That someone should make one of uh, for this where it's, like, you know, all libertarians, leftists, conservatives, communists, progressives, uh, you know, SJWs, like, all these different groups, and, and their swords are pointed to the table, and the table is bashing the FBI. Like, uh, no one... Yeah, I like that one too. Um, it, it's, it's because it's, we killed MLK. Doesn't we? Doesn't mean we can't miss him. Oh. <laughs> it's it, but it's true. Yeah. You yeah. know, sometimes I just wish they would say, "Hey, yeah, we tried to kill him, but we regret it." Man, these memes are incredible. Like <laughs> MLK, FBI gunshots, and then on his fortieth. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, but that's like literally this. And and but what is it? They rely on people not knowing stuff. They rely on yeah. people being scared easily manipulated ignorant of history and and too lazy to look it up and and, and too scared of authority compliant. like yeah scared you don't know you don't, no. maybe don't trust authority but you're scared of it enough to not look into it exactly exactly and i, I get that from a lot of people where they're like you know they're like i just like i'm okay even some libertarians they're like i don't know all this stuff because I don't want to know the details because it's just going to make me angrier. And I get that. Like, I get that not wanting to like be miserable, all the doom post yourself by, you know, looking at all this stuff. Um, but you have to know these types of things are happening. It's one thing yeah. to say, I can't look at this constantly. I don't want to be depressed by it. I don't want to get angry and not be able to live my life, but you have to at least know what's happening and be cognizant of that and then not trust them as a result. If you say, because I don't want to know these things, I'm going to pretend everything's fine. Well, then you're failing yourself. I mean, you're, 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 you're failing yourself. Right. They want us to forget about history so they can take advantage of that and kind of, uh, just make not really make the same mistakes again they're not mistakes they're purposely taking advantage of people they're absolutely taking advantage of people it is i it, you know people say is it more you know willful malice or ineptitude or, or some and what i say is it's a weird combination of both they have malicious intentions and also they suck at everything <laughs> so like for example perfect example was that letter to to dr king 
They're trying to get this guy to kill himself. Also, they can't spell significance. So like, <laughs> it's like, it's uh. like, you know, the, the dichotomy of a federal agent, uh, a, a horrific mass murdering psych sociopath can't spell or think good. Like, but you know so what? It's, it's oh. We're talking typewriter, Spike Cohen. It's like uh, the imagine the the pressure you have to like send someone a threatening letter on a typewriter. Like you get That's one fair. chance. <laughs> but but they but see fraudulent. They went back and corrected fraudulent, probably because right. the chief came in and was like, and honestly, what was this that? Is probably some dumb secretary typed this up. Okay, like or that, it was That's probably fair. dictated to her. So. <laughs> Put fraudulent. Okay. F A O O R. <laughs> fraudulent. You don't spell fraudulent with a three in the middle. What are you doing? <laughs> Helen, get the hell out of here. Idiot. Freaking Helen ruined everything. But that's, so I mean, it, it's, that's government. They, they suck at things and also are, are kind of evil. And when I say they, the, the organizational structure itself, the problem isn't individual agents or politicians or cops or, or bureaucrats or whatever. It is a system that is built on coercive force, monopolization of authority, uh, centralization of all decision making. It's funded through theft and uh, and violence and threats of violence. It's enforced through violence. There's no feedback mechanism. If if I try to govern all of your lives by ordering you around and robbing you and giving you what I think you need, not only is that inherently immoral and unethical and and, and terrible and evil. But it also doesn't work very well. Not for you. It works great for me. But why? I have no reason to provide you with good value because you mm. can't take your business elsewhere, right? So I mean, right. if a, a, it's like the it's like you know going to a a grocery store that's run by like the mob or something like that, and you leave and you know the the food is expired and they also roughed you up a little on the way out and and you're very disappointed and you're going to vote for a new mobster. It's not the individual people that did that to you. It's the organizational structure itself. It's a bad system. Hmm. Makes me think of like welfare and like you only get a certain amount of money, but you spend it on like very expensive, I don't know, insert material thing. And if you don't spend it, they give you less of it. Which, by oh. the way, government agencies are that way, too. I have a friend who's uh, got a nonprofit that helps people in addiction and is is creating an alternative to being arrested. It's an awesome program. Everyone go check out uh, Chris Dreisbach and Second Chances PA. Uh, the work he's doing in Pennsylvania, I, we're, You Are the Power is going to work to help him make that national. Like He's doing incredible work. He, uh, he got a grant uh, that was taken from another organization that was trying to do the same thing, but they didn't do a good job. And they gave him, I don't, I'm not sure how much money, but a, a decent amount of money. And he thinks like a normal person. So he spent, he tried to do it as efficiently as possible. And so when the end of the fiscal year came, they didn't give him another grant. They said, the wow. number one thing is you have to spend all of it. Because if you don't spend all of it, we don't get it next time. We get less. So we're not going to give you any more money. So they rewarded him being efficient and effective with huh. his money. He spent like a fraction of it. And so, and they said, no, you should have asked us. Use all of it, even if you have to spend it on crap that doesn't even matter. Go in the last month, go buy a bunch of like, you know, coffee makers or something like whatever, like whatever you can spend it on, but you have to spend it or else you won't get it again. No other organization would operate that way except an organization that isn't using its money. It's using your money and it's trying to convince you it's a good thing. So, of course, it has to spend all of it. It's just another example of how government is just a uniquely bad way of doing things. Yeah. You have to spend all of it so that they can justify taking as much as they do. And exactly taxing as much as they do exactly all of this is not covered in spike it um <laughs> and this <laughs> a good book spike a it. good libertarian <laughs> book would cover this and much more my book no. is set going up, to be serve spike set it. up and serve and spike it except mm -hmm. spike it's kind of ironic because i wasn't able to spike a ball like i just want to be clear <laughs> about something i if i was on the volleyball team in in pe I at best would be given the role of of serving the ball because it's kind of hard to screw up, you know, just knocking it over there. But the going back and oh, forth yeah. stuff, and in no way was I allowed anywhere near the net. Like so, you're the guy so who hits everything. It's very ironic. You hit everything like this, and you're hitting it away from the net. You're just going like ah, and then you hit it into the corner of the gym, and you're like, oh yeah, no, I screwed that up too. Yeah. Listen, I was a liability. To any team I was on, and, and I, I'm sure all of my friends are watching this from school. And so I'd like to tell you <laughs> how sure. sorry I am um, on this on this Tuesday afternoon that this was not I, I you know, 
I tried my best uh, when it came to youth sports, but my best was that. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that I was too high. I'm sure that didn't help, but I want to be perfectly clear. <laughs> a perfectly sober spike would have absolutely been possibly worse at that. Possibly worse, because then I would have been, I would have felt self conscious about being that bad. And then that would have made it worse, like the stress of that. I was not stressed. I just knew I wasn't good and I owned it. And I, I, I you know, my, my pursuits, my, my, I've excelled elsewhere. So it yeah. is what it is. You I've were saving all your, your potential success. Like you were saving it for adulthood. You were like, I'm going to harness this energy and use it 20 years from now. Yeah. 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 I'm going to do it. And I remember like, you know, everyone thinks it's it's the athlete who gets the pretty girl. And I'm sure that's true in, in many cases, but anyone who has seen my wife, uh, you can be a nerd and still bag nothing but 11s. And that's wow. actually the first chapter of the, well, maybe not the first chapter, one of this the chapters of my book. This might actually it. end up being a good book. <laughs> this may be a good book. <laughs> By the time we're done with this, we may workshop this accidentally into being a good book. Because one it's of them will be about for life. It's not just it doesn't spike apply it for life. It's yeah, it's, if, in all things. Spike it for all things. Yeah. And this and could I, be part I, of I, the manosphere, really. Yeah. <laughs> I uh I, I can I can write a chapter about carrying on the the proud Cohen tradition of looking suspiciously like a hobbit and bagging nothing but elevens. And that's that's it's a proud tradition. I carry it on. It, it it can be a burden at times, uh. But I do. I I I. It is my burden. My family burden. It are, it's People our crest. Want to know? And yeah. How you bagged an eleven? There's, there's a whole. Like there's going to be a chapter about it. Not well written. I'm actually going to get Helen to write it. The 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 chick who did the uh, the the King letter. Um. But I'm. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. What well, you know. The quality is not going to be good. It is still easier to, you know, correct an error on a on a standard modern keyboard with a word processor. Don't give processor, her any, but any big words to type out. Don't say no fraudulent. big words. It's all all multisyllabic. Like spike it. It's going to be all multi. Yeah. There's going to be a handful of two and three syllable words. No SAT hot words will be in spike it. Helen cannot none, handle that. None at all. No, this book will not prepare you uh, for the PSAT. So, <laughs> yay! I can't wait. <laughs> spike Cohen, thank you for your time. This was a great fun discussion. We went yeah. to places I did not expect, but I'm happy we went there. You didn't expect to go to Spike It? No. <laughs> in, in retrospect? No. Thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun. And, Spike uh, 2, How I Bagged an 11. This is a great idea. Oh, I, wow. See, I'm not I'm not being Jewish enough about this. I need to monitor. The first book gets people. First of all, it sets people's expectations. These books are not good. Right. So people know right. that it's just scarcity. I got one of the seven. It's probably not good. He said it's not good. So I'm going to trust him. Then I do Spike Two, How I Bagged an 11. I'm letting and you know the, that spikeit.com looks to be available. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to pressure <laughs> you into anything, but I did just check. Spike so. Two um, is actually part of the dark web. So you can't actually get that. <laughs> you can't get that domain that. in. Yeah. And nor would I want it. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so spike two will be that and we'll print, uh, 10 of those and those will be $2,000. So oh, seven wow. grand, the first one, 20 grand, the second one. So we're, you know, we're going to, we're not, this is not a career, um, but it will be a, a decent grift. And it will be delivered to you by a bald eagle. Yes. Ah! Which is not hard now. That's no, like they're not. Cause they're back. Extremely common. Extremely common. Yeah. <laughs> the spike. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Where Thank you all for tuning in. Where can people follow you it. other than on Twitter at Real Spike Cohen and at YATP Official and on SpikeCohen.com? Anywhere else? Uh, uh, absolutely. So I'm on YouTube at literally Spike Cohen, or if you just type in Spike Cohen, you'll find me. Uh, really, on any of these apps, if you type in Spike Cohen, you'll find me because it turns out there aren't a tremendous number of Spike Cohens. There was a dog uh, in Connecticut who died a few years ago named Spike Cohen, but other than that, it's pretty much. That's pretty much it. But so if you look for Spike Cohen, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on uh, Twitter, I'm on uh, YouTube, I'm on TikTok for the kids and the and the Chinese government. Um, I'm on LinkedIn uh, as well. But I, I am, uh, yeah, my website is SpikeCohen.com. Uh, I do in-person events uh, and a lot of public speaking. Uh, so if you stay tuned on SpikeCohen.com, we keep that updated with my upcoming events. And um, so hopefully I get to meet you in person. Uh, and, uh, what else? Oh, you are the power. So I would love to have you be a part of you are the power. If you go to, you are the power.net, you can sign up today for free. Um, and, uh, you can also follow us 
on yeah, you are the power on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at YATP official. And if you ever get lost, if you ever are having a hard time finding me, the North Star is if you go to the ATF Facebook page uh, and go to their most recent post, you will see me there just ratioing them to oblivion Ooh. to hell. So that that's the that's the real good stuff there. So, but again, thank you for having me on. Thank you folks for tuning in. Follow me and subscribe and hit the bell on YouTube and do the same for, for Chrissy. And uh, I don't know how it works on Rumble and those, but hit whatever various appendages are on her thing. Follow, subscribe, like, you know. Don't forget to spike, spike the like Social. button. Yeah. Sp yeah, spike the like, hit retruther. I think it's called on, on, on Truth Social. Gabber. I don't know what whatever she's on. Do the thing to to demonstrate your approval of and following of her. <laughs> all the things. And don't forget to. Oh, I thought we we're gonna do this together. Wow. I, I have no idea gonna... what's happening. I thought, you, I thought you could feel what I was setting up here. Don't forget. Oh, to... don't forget to spike, spike it. it. Bye. <laughs>